Yo, what's up? Oh man, I like this. I I, I think it's hear. good. What? I can't. I'm not here. Oh, oh you have yeah. you have the <laughs> you have go. the music. Oh! <laughs> oh, that must have been that was too sudden for go. you. Go. Go. <laughs> no wonder I was like, why doesn't? Oh man, he doesn't think this is funny. Shit. Oh, it's so loud. It's quiet on the stream if it's loud oh, for us. Shit. That's alright. I just turned him down. That's Holy fuck. that's a sacrilege. That is extreme. It's Those so hardcore. Gregorian chants. Uh, oh my god! I just googled Gregorian chant dubstep, and the first one was perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what you're looking for, really. It was so yeah. Um, welcome everyone. What's going on with you? Uh, I. Um, I, I joined the Ray Tracing Revolution, bought a new graphics card. You told me that, uh, okay. And, and uh, just got done having tummy trubs, but we're back. Stream's a little late. Question. Stream po postpones for, postponed for tummy trubs. Question. Yeah. Is there any reason that I shouldn't just wake myself up with smelling salts every single day? Probably not. Uh, I think that's fine. I, I th some I think some I nose might. nose torque is nose yeah, torque different than nose smelling nose salts? Torque. No, nose torque is is smelling uh, actually is it salt. Peter? Isn't it? Yeah, isn't it even more intense than smelling salts? Yeah. Um, or maybe it's a well, it is called smelling salts, but I feel like it's just imagine waking up immediately getting a pump. You get a pump you just from the from the from the salts. Emergency pump. Adrenaline's going. So you're talking about smelling the salts and then also lifting. Uh, I don't know about you, but when my, my fight or flight things kick in, I immediately swell up like a balloon. Nice. I'm, yeah. So like every time I'm, it's actually like when I'm on the road. Oh wait, you mean like your uh, muscles? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine too. Uh, when, when I, when I'm on the road, I'll be driving and somebody will like kind of swerve a little bit weird. Um, my, my immediate reaction is to puff up like a puffer fish. It's it really hard to, just to ram them off the, yeah. Pit maneuver. Yeah. Um, Hard pit maneuver. So uh, that's what's going on with me. What you got? It, that's what's going on with you. Is you're considering smelling salts? <laughs> yeah, I, I've, been, I've been working. You've just oh, been, I've been thinking every single day. Oh, okay. That's uh, that's my life right now. No more free weeks. Free trying to get a, trying to get a fucking a business off the ground, yo. Ooh, fancy. That's no, that's not fun to talk about. Like no. the, the the it's 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 un. Uncool. I don't want to talk about. Inventory, yeah, you yuppie. Mm. No yuppies on this cast. We're all, we're all, this, we're supposed to, we were, we got almost to the top of the hipster ladder. Now you're being a fucking yuppie, dude. I'm getting into home brewing, and you're over here being a fucking yuppie. Everybody's been, in, everybody's into home brewing now. Our fucking I, vibes are gonna be so off. God, that Conde Nast tweet was pretty good. That's why, yeah. That's all I think about is like, damn, I love this, but it's purely Thanks because Conde Nast pays YouTube to put their shit on the front page. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, all of every every single every single uh, lactobacillus in my gut is going to be because of that of Adam Rapoport. They're trying to make you grow bitch tits. Uh, yeah. No, I've 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 blocked the word IPA from from my router. <laughs> no, no web page is, is allowed to is allowed to let it through. Small batch. Uh, Double distilled. No, yeah, no, no more nonstick. My kids are gonna have big peepees. I got the cast iron putting on. It's the third layer of flax oil right now. Oh my god. Uh, it's gonna be great. That avocado oil. No, that avocado. Avocado is is a saturated fat that wouldn't work. You need polyunsaturated fat. 
Oh my bad, my bad. Sorry, piece of shit. A beta male like me, a non-stick. You haven't even you haven't even begun to. This is wait a minute. You've lost your soul. The yuppie, you're fucking full yuppie now. Obviously, uh, a non-stick is going to have those kind of uh, beta male properties. But yeah, have we considered that if you if you consume enough of it, or you you know you eat enough of food off of non-stick, it causes your you to have bad sperms. Yeah, like your your semen don't stick no more. Almost certainly, it it, it just dribbles right out. Oh, it's try to knock your girl up. just natural birth control. Yeah, no, of course this is this is established. Mm-hmm. You're you're years behind. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, grain cereal like wheat like Wheaties. That's mm-hmm. just making your dick bad. All corn, uh, basically. Yeah, corn makes your dick bad. Soy yeah, makes bad your dick, dick bad. Yes. Uh, uh plastic, all plastic, basically. Mm-hmm. Receipts. Opiates. Cans. Op- just about everything well, that we manufacture. If you combine opiates with speed, that's 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 just Chad mode in a pill, you know. So that's uh, fine. Uh, should I take Adderall? Yeah, you know, once, sure. Oh, uh, you're saying I shouldn't get a prescription, though? Oh, if you can get a prescription, get a fucking prescription because I would like some. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, like not even like recreationally. I just I want to I want to like see numbers floating through the air. I want to do complex calculations. Well, then you're gonna really you're gonna quickly. you're gonna like browse like you know fucking any whatever website your browser's on for I'm gonna six know hours. The entire the entire Muddy more from Power Rangers lore inside of you know three hours. Yeah, you're gonna read the Metal Gear Solid wiki. You know again, uh, <laughs> fucking. Yeah, like you're gonna clean if your place is dirty all day, or yeah, just look at your phone. Someone asked me rec- recently if they should try uh, Xanax, and I was like, uh, "You're either not gonna notice it, or you're gonna lose like six months of your life." So probably <laughs> that seems like how it happens for most people. Uh, the way yeah. I see it online is when you're barred out. Either you're like, "Man, damn, this shit sucks. I don't even feel it," or you're just like, "Well, then I woke up two months later and I had lost my job," you know. <laughs> I had I, I was no, covered in vomit. Mix it with alcohol. No, <laughs> absolutely not. You know what they say? You're not supposed to mix kratom with alcohol, but I've done that. And that's no, that's great. yeah, that's probably just bad for your kidneys or something. Yeah, it was so good though. That's probably pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the most attentive drunk you can possibly have. It's sweet. Don't do it though. It is bad. Probably, Don't. Do I it. looked it up and it is bad for you. Don't. Not approved. I did it like twice and it was sick. And it made watching the Friday the Thirteenth movies amazing, but uh, <laughs> you know I haven't been the same since. Nice. Um, what else you got? Let's see. Well, you're home brewing. Oh, you went and bought the shit. Yeah, I didn't buy. Start- I didn't buy the shit yet. I'm going to the shit sometime this weekend. Maybe tomorrow. I'm gonna okay. buy a bunch of Carboys, a bunch mm. of, a bunch of Demi Johns. I'm just gonna spend seventy dollars at the local brew shop. Uh, can't wait to be the I only sp- person. I spent there. enough money on prostitutes to where I'm a demi John. There you go. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh, but I couldn't. I couldn't wait. I was too excited to homebrew, so I made some. Uh, uh, some really. Uh, it's, it's, uh, haphazard or, or uh, re- really. Yeah, that works. Uh, f- 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 uh, fly by the seat of your pants, Kavas. Um, uh, and it was and delicious. You so it, Kvass is again. Kvass is um, heavily toasted rye bread, right? Okay. And sugar and delicious. water. It's great. I, Did you put fruit in it? I put a little bit of raisins. Oh man. And uh, it just tastes like, or it just tastes like a, it just tastes like a sweet beer. How much do you have to drink to get drunk? Oh yeah, I don't think you get drunk. <laughs> Uh, Excuse me. it. I have no idea how much alcohol is in it because I haven't bought the the hydrometer yet. Oh, um, so that's a specialized. But tool. I just I just use bread yeast. Uh, mm. so and it only it only ferments for like two days, so it probably only got up to one or two percent. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it just tastes like a like a dark. beer. It's just bread in there, a little bit of lemon. Oh, like nice. uh, it's, and if you could make something, you know, as fucking no. Uh, preparation materials is that good i figured well i guess i i guess i gotta do this now i also had my I'm, first uh, kombucha i was like i guess i have to try this and that was delicious now i gotta make that too because it's fucking three bo- three dollars a bottle can't be yeah. buying that i need to make that in a big uh that was jug the thing that uh, that turned me off from it was that i didn't have enough room in my fridge at the time <laughs> to make a scoby and maintain it you don't keep it so in the I'll fridge 
Uh, oh, really? No, you keep it out. Oh. It's a living thing. It needs to grow. Can't do that in the fridge. Oh. That's what fridges prevent. So are you, you're going to make some? I'm going to, yeah. I have a couple of gallon jars. I'll make some, I'll make some booch in one. Some booch and some hooch, dude. You're living it. Yeah, I'm going to be living it. Uh, Dream. And then, um, remember, I want to close this saga. Remember how okay. my neighbor stole my snow shovel? Yes. <laughs> that was, had a snow shovel in my, like, storage unit when I first moved in here a year and a half ago. Um, the Some guy moved all his shit into my storage unit, uh, which was a ballsy move but i guess it's okay because i was fine with it because i didn't really have anything in there except my snow shovel which he kept mm. in his in his new unit uh so i bought a lock picking set and uh for legal purposes i must state i i went up to him and i asked him politely if i could pick his lock and he gave his consent so <laughs> i snuck in there at night um and i was hanging out with uh uh, two of our friends. Let's I shouldn't. I, let's call them Jim and Bonner. And, and you're not to implicate them. Of course. No, of course not. No. Um, but uh, uh, but um, I legally was trying to pick the lock, and it turns out Jim just reached out of the door and grabbed the shovel and took it out as I was doing he's it. He's got those. Uh, I mean, not to give any sort of descriptors that would help identify this. Kid, he's got those arms. Yeah. He's, he's kind of. He's kind of built like a Sasquatch. I, anyone could have done it. I just didn't. I was thinking too hard about it. Uh, well, now you've got a lock. But, but stuff, then, but fun. so then, but then I had to pick the lock out of principle so that I could say I picked the lock and took my shovel back, even though I didn't necessarily do them in that order. Yes. But now I have. Uh, now I have a forty dollar lock picking set that I can get into anywhere with. So watch out. I'm gonna show up in your in your flat one day. My flat. In your in your flat. <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna hop in your lorry and come to my flat, and, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna take your piss. You and your boys are gonna take my piss. Uh, well, that's lovely. I'm glad you got you went back. What was yours? You you cut and took. Hell yeah, brother! Feels good to be living the life of of an outlaw. I'm fucking. I'm I'm yeah. I'm making bathtub gin basically, um, and I'm stealing things. I'm basically Johnny Cash. You need to learn to play the banjo. How hard gonna be? There's, there's only, only like, like three, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's only like three strings, you know, and then it's basically a drum. You just drink you know? a bunch of moonshine, then you go fucking wild. Yeehaw! You know, exactly. And uh, you don't really need to have time because everybody else is gonna be trashed. Yeah, no one will notice if you're bad. This is my new plan. That's I'm, I'm honestly quitting. backwards. Hillbilly Declan is the one I'm looking forward to the most. I'll get there. Trust me. Things will definitely come to that point. But before that, we have to finish watching Index. Do you like and, that one? Uh, I would. Yeah. Nice, dude. Thanks, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do have to finish watching Index. Still do too, but we did then as well. Thank you. Um, just real quick to keep our audience engaged, I have to do it to point out. That everybody, Angry Mage says he's doing Rim Worlds. Be safe, man. Wear protection. Yeah, that's a lot of people don't know that you're supposed to wear a condom around your tongue. I think they have a different device for that. You can get it I mean, lubricated. I, you can, yeah. Just I guess at a pinch, you can. No pun intended. You can <laughs> <laughs> wrap that puppy right around your uh, your tongue. If you, if you got like a Gene Simmons kind of deal going, you know. Oh yeah, if you there. if you've removed the connector beneath your yeah, then you can sue. When your pussy gets the makeup all over, you can sue it for copying you. Uh, well, technically, you bought the rights to the design of the pussy, so it is yours. My name is Gene Simmons, and I own pussy. It's a concept. I don't know what he sounds like. He had one of those uh, shows where he was a dad too. It was sure it did. He had rock, he, rock of rock of love. Rock of ages. No, Rock of Love was um, Brett Michaels. Uh, what, the, what was the Gene Simmons one? Um, we, can get this. we can get this. I don't know. Hulk Hogan had Hogan Knows Best. Uh, uh, there's Flava Flav. Flava Flav had... That was uh, a dating show. Yeah, yeah, that's all the same shit. Well, I'm talking about like... Oh, Gene Simmons rocks... No, my... Wait, what? Oh, Gene yeah, Simmons like, Family Jewels. That's it. I was thinking about that recently. <laughs> I caught... 
I caught a solid 15 seconds of that accidentally once. And then I'm like, never again. <laughs> never again. Yeah, I, I, I would always catch some parts of those terrible shows. And Oh, yeah, o o Ozzy had one where it's like Ozzy being a dad. Hogan Knows Best. Family Jewels. Didn't they have a new one coming out with The Big Show? It's called um, The Big Show Show. Uh-huh. I don't know if that's scripted or not. Um, yeah, they, they like to do that. Gene Simmons is an American-Israeli musician. What? Gene Klein, known professionally as Gene Simmons. Huh. But then it's seven seasons. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Was that, uh, was that VH1 or MTV? Oh, boy. I mean, that sure sounds like a VH1 to me. A&E. Uh, &E. Okay, wait, no. It didn't start on... Wow, really? Huh. It must have aired other places, though. I'm sure. That's got that. That's got some serious syndication to go into, you know. One of these episodes. <laughs> let's okay. Let's play a game called uh, Gene Simmons Family Jewels episode title, <laughs> uh huh, or Index episode title. How about that? Okay. All right. Uh, number one. Our life passes before us. Uh, uh, uh Gene Simmons. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Um. Okay. Number two. The demon salutes. Gene Simmons. That is also a, G a Gene Simmons episode title. How about um, uh, Cold Front? Gene Simmons. <laughs> yeah, you got Actually, it. I knew you, I knew you didn't look it up. Yeah, I know. Oh, you didn't hear me typing. <laughs> <laughs> Why are these all about demons? Uh, I guess. Well, this is these uh these are relatable issues that they cover in in this program. X Gene. Like, uh, they, Yes, yes, it aired in 2006, but that doesn't mean it's any less relevant now than it was then. I, I think that... Uh, the demon turns 60. We could oh all learn gosh. something from the rock, the rock of Love. This Wait, is not no, the Rock... Gene Simmons, Gene Simmons family, jewels. family Jewels. Rock of Love was a dating show. It was about Brett Michaels getting herpes from, from ladies. Oh, you know what? I don't think I saw Gene Simmons. I think I caught 15 seconds of the Osbournes, which is nearly identical. Uh, yeah, of course it is. Yes. It's just all these guys pretending to be like normal dads. Yeah. Because they can't hear anything. Yeah, musical they cues, were... like, you know, yeah. fucking uh, cymbals and like... Oh, oh my God. The Osbournes was the, high, the most oh, used God. series ever on MTV. Of course it was. It was probably pretty entertaining. Like, it was probably funny. <laughs> Just like uh, you don't expect, like, you know, fucking, whatever, like, Duck Dynasty to be funny, but then it kind of is. It's fun. They make those fun. If you, you've seen Alaska, Alaskan Bush People, right? I don't think it was called that, but yeah. Okay. Maybe I'm it was called that. Was, was recently telling me that Alaskan Bush People is, you expect it to just be like, backwater hip, uh, hillbilly antics but then it ends up being like colossally entertaining because there's these weird like cultural dynamics going on and things like that and uh, apparently it's very entertaining uh it was pretty entertaining when i was watching it in a uh, work basement with with connor uh mm. we worked together in that basement but uh i don't you know it was just like they weren't really back with like they they live in Alaska like six months and one day out of the year and like they have a huge boat and shit so like it's not like they're really they do live in tree houses it seems like during that time but it's like I don't know it wasn't really well, bush, be away bush people is a bit the best part of that show was that they were the Browns and their camp their com commune was called Brown Town so every uh, few minutes the narrator would say they have to get back to Brown Town and I I loved that everything else was like eh, I don't know. If only there were the pounds, and they can go to pound. They would town. do some silly stuff, like the son would like cover himself in mud and like howl like a wolf, <laughs> like hunting or something. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, I've known those families. <laughs> um, Index is back, baby. It is. It was back a while ago, but we just got to when this episode. When did it episode. air? Uh, this is from early this year, winter this year, I think. Okay. Uh, I think. No, fall 2018. All right, so All right, we're a bit, be bit behind on this one. That's fine. Index not going anywhere. Um, 
And no one and no one listens to these ones, so it's not like anyone was anticipating it. So it's fine. This is where we can get really experiment experimental. Uh, Lots of reverb. Yeah. No. Well, try your yeah. Try your weird material. Uh, so, yeah. This is so we're doing first half of season three, longly anticipated, longly season three, third season of Index. <laughs> Eight years. God damn it. Well, like seven and something. It's a long time. Still not quite Kingdom Hearts numbers. Uh, well, Kingdom Hearts had half sequels. Literally half, I think, in some cases. What about Railgun? That's not, that's happening concurrently, so it's not a sequel. Okay. Or a prequel. Well, how do you know the Kingdom Hearts stuff is All happening? side characters. The, the antagonist of Kingdom Hearts is, is, is unveiled in one of those quote-unquote side games. You got... No leg to stand on, pal. Railgun right, is right. a total... Uh, you don't need that shit. Um, so, it's been, it had been a while. It's been a while. Uh, it's been a while? Yes. Thank you. Oh, you, is that... That was it. Oh, okay. I thought you were going <laughs> to... I, 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 I was going to sit back for three minutes and just let you kind of... Do the whole. I don't know. That's all. That's the only part I remember from. That you don't know song. the rest of the song. He does say that it's part a lot, a but it's been a while. He didn't put enough stank on it. Is that song called "It's Been a While"? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if it was called something completely different. <laughs> um. Yeah, it is. It is. I believe that's Creed, right? Gotta be. Yeah. His fucking chin. <laughs> um. Yeah, so episode one of Index, season three. Um, That's stained just before we get too far. Oh, wow. It is. Holy shit. Uh, wait, what was. Oh, not to be confused with uh, Stone Sour. That was another. Um, okay, I've written up my notes. I wrote. I did this, you know, probably six months ago. No, more than that. I watched the first nine episodes of this a very long time ago, like near when it was airing. Oh, wow. And in background here, I've written, I'll get to the rest of this later, I'm drunk. Uh, I guess <laughs> I don't remember that, but I did not get to that later. So, But, you know, it's last season, 2010 to 2011. This season, 2018, still JC staff. Um, everyone was really excited. Everyone, This was so anticipated because they're going to get to World War Three arc. So I don't think it's a spoiler when I say everyone's waiting for that World War Three arc. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also won't get to that in this episode, so sorry. But we're pretty close. Um, we're, on the, we're on the brink of war. Yes. And we have to set it up, otherwise it won't have, have enough impact. So Ken Burns doesn't just jump straight into it. No, he takes 12 hours, I think. I don't know, that's what I've just about. absorbed from hearing about him. Uh, episode 1 starts with a recap. In case you've forgotten anything about this str- extremely simple and memorable plot. Okay. <laughs> How can you not forget... Nessus, how can you remember? How can you wait? How can oh you? God, how so could many. you? How could you forget Necessarius or uh, the right hand or Amakusa. Sha- Shannon? What's her name? Sh- uh, Sheena. Uh, <laughs> Sheena. Agnese. <laughs> fucking. Uh, oh, there's like a, a tu- Shirono at some point. Tsuchi Mikado. They just start smashing together. Syllables. Laura Stewart. Uh, Lord, no, God, my brain. How could you forget uh, Sylvester? Wait, uh, Crowley, Al- Alistair Crowley is in here. Speaking of uh, Ozzy, he would like this show. Uh, uh, fucking, I would like to go on note and say I watched the, the dub for the first episode of this. Oh my God, why? Uh, uh, just because I wanted to know. Yeah. Uh, it's it's re- actually I didn't even go for the first episode. I watched like maybe like five minutes. Uh, it is. Fuck awful. You don't. <laughs> you don't like, need it. No. Yeah, like um, it, like the really it comes down to, index is completely unbearable, yep. and uh, and Toma is super flat. It doesn't like his voice doesn't have the timbre necessary to really yell, or uh, like be kind yeah, of probably not not shrieky enough. Yeah. That's not exactly not not exasperated enough. Yeah, it doesn't. You can't feel the. You can't He's hear the chill. weight the weight of the world on his shoulders and his voice. He's, that's right, exactly right. He is yeah. too chill um, and flat for the character of Toma. So he, he's too flat. Index not flat enough. Yes, I feel you. Um, I'm picking it up. 
But uh, anyway, yes. Uh, also, also, rotten luck. Oh, he says, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's better than such misfortune. Such misfortune. So, actually, maybe it's not. I don't know. But uh, I, even the Japanese voice actor, I think, sounds a bit different. I guess it's been, you know, seven something years. Uh, so, um, uh, I've written the things he's talking about don't match what's on screen. Oh, because there's a yeah, there's a recap, and it's I didn't think it was very well put together. Mm. And uh, at one point, he says, "What the hell's going on?" So they know. <laughs> um, and then uh, we see the opening, which is just a strange this. Um, um, organ instrument they got going on I love in, this, in that op. I love this opening. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's weirdly upbeat, and there's that weird part where Index is gonna bite him, but then it there's a yeah. weird cut to her doing a smile. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I do too, but <laughs> it's so it. weird. It, well, it, yeah, it, there's no like in between. It just cuts straight to her like being happy and upbeat. It's like they made the shot of her biting him and then decided like, oh no, they, there's de- there's been development. She's just gonna smile instead, but she still does yeah. the full wind up. Very strange. I like it. I, it's like, <laughs> kind of like it's like poppy and euro be. The, the lady's voice goes kind of robotic at one point. I'm into it. Well, yeah, it all it has to do that. It always does that. Been doing that since 2008. Um. So back to our old shenanigans. Toma comes back without lunch. Fukoda. Fukoda. Mm-hmm. Um, then he gets in trouble in school for getting beat up by a girl. Um, I thought, you know, I think, uh, I think the animation has probably taken a little bit of a dive. I thought the faces seemed less expressive. Or maybe they were just kind of getting back into it, drawing these people. It looks, it looks worse in the mids than I remember it looking. Like, like the in-betweens? The- yeah, or like 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 wide like you know kind of wider shots like oh. close ups are still like like really nice, but like the mids and wides you start to lose detail a little faster. It feels like, but I was able to get over it. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the world, there's protests in France. Hmm, interesting. Topical. There's this is the everything about this show is just the perfect because all this was written in like 2009 or 2010 or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's so there's so many like I bet there's so many people draw, trying to draw parallels and it's a great uh it's just a great way to see how <laughs> things can accidentally uh match up to the real world well you know what it the odds are if you on any given day it's probably it's pretty likely that france is protesting that's also so true. I, it's, it's not that hard of a call to make really yeah um so uh there's uh in academy city there's a bunch of uh, a bunch of toki wadai girls browsing a weapons exhibition um that's a that's me that's misaka's school um and kuro goes here she hasn't disappeared yet from this series at some point i know she just goes away um toma picks weeds with uh fukiyose who's sports girl i think big boob school girl um i felt like she was drawn different but i could be wrong i don't know but he sees her panties and he throws a and she throws a fastball into her face I face. remember half of these characters at any given time, mm-hmm. and then I, I have to clear space in my memory for characters, so like I can retain a couple of them. Oh, at it's once. it's just like Index's memory limit is you only have so many. Yes. You have to clear your brain out, or else that's a problem. I also explode. I do not remember this girl, but I liked her. <laughs> I liked her. She threw a fastball at him. Yeah, cool. she uh, she was in the um the sports day arc. That's right. Just right. she, got, like, she got yes. wet. She walked in on her changing. I forget what her. She was the school. She was running stuff and being bossy or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so Index hangs out with his old lady. Um, Toma sees the old lady's daughter, who is a teacher, and uh, she's cleaning coffee off of her skirt. And then he gets stuff thrown at him, and then he runs into Misaka, and uh, he uh, from. Uh, the last arc, he has her mom and his contacts and a selfie with her, which is a fucking yes. good-ass bit. Yes, it is. <laughs> Misa mom is so good. Uh, uh, wasn't it, wasn't that... Also, I think that was when she was drunk for no reason. They didn't explain it. Yeah, her mom's got a bit of a problem. Uh-huh. We're not judging her for that problem. Yeah, I guess. But but uh, I, I I really liked him. He, he wasn't actually going to go... He sees her at a distance, and he's like, I'm just not even going to bother right now. I can't be fucked to deal with Misaka getting pissed at me. Misaka <laughs> getting, getting pissed at me. 
and she sees him anyway and goes after him and it's great it's like you know the, the dynamic between them has changed it a little bit in this season um but uh it's classic index shit just yeah bad luck for Kyoda, yeah he's just he can't fucking catch a break this just keep i want them to keep rationing it up selfie with the mom is a fucking the perfect amount of silly and like he he's intentionally trying to avoid conflict. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, like oh no i accidentally took this pic of me getting my dick sucked by your mom oh no yeah have gone any- <laughs> it's great um Worst part about this season, they changed the Imagine Breaker sound. What? What the fuck? It's a weird noise now that I can't explain, and instead of the other noise, I can't explain. I mean, it used to be glass breaking. I guess that's easy to explain, and it's not anymore. Yeah, it's got. Or no, it wasn't glass breaking. It was a. It was a like a. Yeah, no, I can't explain. It's, yeah, it's different now. It's not as good. Uh, it's uh, it's trouble in paradise. Trouble in paradise here, man. Sphinx's meow has gotten really weird. Uh, what else we got? Going Something's on up with that? this old lady. Uh, yes. And what's up is that she holds Toma at gunpoint. Yes. And uh, she explains that her name is Oyafune Monaka, and she's a member of Academy City's board of directors. And then Tsuchi Mikado shows up and fucking shoots her. I have to say, I love the amount of guns pulled in this season. Everybody's got guns. <laughs> it makes me so happy. Until they go to Britain, yeah, everyone's got a fucking gun. Tsuchi Mikado's got a gun. Accelerator's <laughs> got a gun. Old lady's got a gun. Everybody's got guns, and it's great. I mean, Excel, Excel used a gun in the last season. Yeah, but it's just war guns, please. Yeah. <laughs> just People pulling war- out just pistols is funny. <laughs> these like incredible magical entities pulling out guns is awesome accelerator is god <laughs> yes yeah you have to make him pull out a gun um uh, as when she gets shot she explains that the council is planning to aggravate the conflict uh with the church so that they can eliminate them uh so everybody everybody uh keep a close eye on the twin towers Mm, I got bad news, man. Uh, no, this takes place in 2000. Um, oh my god, we gotta get a message through to the anime universe. We gotta let them know. Yeah, well, hey, when you find out how, you let me know. Uh, they gotta f- fly to France to obtain some artifact or something. You know, what's, you know what's going on. It's France yeah. time. We haven't been uh, to France yet, also, and we have to go to France. Uh, also, the scene of them going to France is great, because it's like a super abrupt cut to to uh toma being just like thrown flying through the air ridiculous speeds and push back into his seat yeah and Tsuchi Mikado is doing finger guns at him i have yes. that screenshot up right now on the stream and it's great uh really great stuff from Tsuchi Mikado this season also uh yeah he's he's as good as he's ever been um steel style i always forget how to say his name steely uh steel steel do He's back. He's inter- interrogating two Nordic twinks uh, in bondage gear in a prison castle. Um, their names, Biagio Busoni and Lidvia Lorenzetti. Mamma mia, forget about it. <laughs> I'm definitely forgetting about those names. <laughs> Fucking hell. Come on. You, they don't even try to help us out here. <laughs> well, we're just meeting them. That's their names. What? We'll get, why do I need both names? <laughs> Give me one. I'm not gonna remember the. I'm you don't have to. You don't have to. Names. It's fine. They're they're part of the right hand. Um. Oh, and and Biagio. I think we've met before. Um. It's Norio Wakamoto. Is his voice actor? So he's back. He's still alive. I think. Yeah. We, he was on the boat. He was the guy on the boat. Uh, he was the priest on a boat that he beat really quick. Um. Yes. So he's still alive. Agnese is here too, which is great because she hasn't come back in a while. Um, this this show does not waste characters. There's never no. It's a one piece levels of continuity where everyone's coming back at some point. That's part of the beauty of it, I think. It's no it's, one's ever really gone. It feels like, uh, I mean, obviously there's a a war brewing, but it always feels like somebody had like different characters are doing their own thing that Toma stumbles into, which I guess is kind of part of the accelerator, you know, uh, of um index and railgun happening at the same time is that it necessitates this kind of internal you know lore of where characters are at and stuff but mm-hmm. I, I i find it to be a lot of fun because you never know who you're going to bump into again and they're usually doing something interesting and cool 
Like standing on the wing of a plane. We'll get exactly. to it. Um, oh, one of the Italians is a girl. It's the one that's not Biagio. Mm-hmm. Um, so the girl, yeah, her, she breaks free with magic and demands the release of Oriana. Remember Oriana? Oriana Thompson, dude. Uh, yes, the boob safari lady from the school, uh, from the sports arc. So uh, then uh, back cut to Toma fucks up his landing in France and ends up in the drink. This is great. Happens more than once this season. Um, gets saved by a girl, which who is who I fucking think it is. It is fucking Towel Girl. Speaking of recurring characters, holy shit! I was, uh, I had no idea she would ever come back. And number one most anticipated character to, to return for me. And she's like a main character in this season. It's so good. How does my man have? I mean, uh, I asked this question at this point uh, in my notes. How does Toma have so many hoes? And then I remembered throughout the course of watching this, I remembered exactly why he's got all those hoes. Because this is written by a genius. It's because he's the best dude ever. He's the raddest motherfucker always. He's, he's surrounded. He's surrounded by women because he's uh, marred by bad fortune. <laughs> Uh, well, they're they're all super timid he, women that could never feel their true feelings. That's never the bad fuck. fortune. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're all younger than him. Well, maybe they're not. I don't know. Some of them aren't. Um, but fucking towel girls back. It's Itsua. Holy shit! I freaked. I lost it. Um, so the MacGuffin here that they're after, it can make whatever the Pope says true, or it makes everyone believe it, or something. It makes pe- followers of the church believe whatever the Pope says. Yes. It is true in their mind going forward. Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, then Itsuwa gets uh, wet, and then Toma yes. points. Uh, he has to verbally point out to her that her shirt has become slightly see-through and re- like reveals some dark purple underneath, indicating that <laughs> so, she's wearing a bra. Of so he's like, hey, oh my god, you have to... Ah. The proper course of action then is to like dress up in a cum slut outfit. Really not helping just, yourself, Toma. Yeah, then her new shirt's way boobier. <laughs> just fucking, just straight up cleave. Nothing but cleave. So much cleave. Oh, delivering. Wait, what episode is this? I gotta bring this up. It's two. It's, it's two. It's two. Excellent. Um, and then uh, whoa, whoa. Okay, um. Toma spills his scrambled egg sandwich, <laughs> um, but he gets some napkins from a waitress, which foils Itsuwa's opportunity to give him a hot towel. <laughs> this show is so fucking dense, dude. It's so many layers. It has so much going on. Sorry, I'm trying to find the titties real That's quick. That's all right. Um, there we go. I can, I can, I can, oh, come I... back. Oh, my titties. God damn it. Fucking. You talk for a bit. Uh... We're learning about uh, the the weapon, doc document C or whatever it is. Sure. Um, and it you know it allows you it allows the Pope to basically mind control any of his followers, and it can only be used from the Vatican, but yeah. because they installed tunnels underneath the Earth that lead from the Vatican to various like historical you know uh, Catholic sites, he can then use it in those places as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's, he's able, basically he's going to be able to mind control everybody in France. Um, Sweet. and we gotta, we gotta stop it. We gotta stop this madness. They got, they gotta go to this, this church or someplace the Pope visited at one point or stopped some, in for a fucking some, little potty break. Yeah. Some place where a guy did a thing. Um, and then we cut back to the interrogation where, uh, Stile style is, uh, He's, he's, you know, getting some information from him, and uh, it seems like if you eliminate the original sin, so this is the right hand, the right hand of God, is that they're, they're trying to orig- eliminate their original sin to become super good at fighting, uh, because they're, it basically raises you up to the level of God. Yeah, uh, and they, they spend a shit ton of time explaining why the Pope can use the MacGuffin in France, even though the Vatican isn't in France, and... And they spend so much time, even though that's just a rule that they made up. Why make up the rule that it only works in the Vatican when you're just going to immediately break it and struggle to explain why? Uh, because we want to be in France. They just make it so that it works anywhere. Uh, but then that would be too powerful, and then he could extend his reach anywhere. He ne- it needs to have a little bit of limitations. Oh, so it only works in France and the Vatican? 
Well, it, it works. It works in the other places the Vatican is connected oh, to. It works. Right? It works exactly. along the ley lines or something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Toma's about to get mobbed. Yes. Uh, I forget why. Oh, because the because the thing. They're, they're, yes, they're in control. He uses the thing. Um, oops, that doesn't work when that's full screen. Oh no. Uh, okay, so Sochi Mikado leads no, I fixed Toma it. to a solution to the Doc C problem, which is they got to blow up the pipeline. So they uh, scramble to get to the pipeline locations. Mm -hmm. um, Itsuwa uh, busts out a trident. Yes. And gives an adorable little yeah. Uh, to break a chain uh, on a gate. Uh, yes. And then there's she tries a ritual involving her panties to shut down the ley line. Um, but they get attacked by a guy called Terra of the Left. This guy. <laughs> who's a, just a drag queen looking clown ass. Um... And then this ends on a on a cliffhanger. We don't know what will become of the Toe Man. We got uh, we do get a great line. Uh, one of my favorite favorite types of lines, which is "So this is the right the right hand of God." That's a good so one. The right seat of God. Yep. Uh, which is a classic cliffhanger line. Uh, quick mm -hmm. break. I need to go pee. So cue up whatever you've got for a pee break. Uh, a I don't have I don't have anything queued up. What? Uh, talk talking about talk about. Micro brews or home brewing. Seasonal micro brews. All right. Well, you know, I'm gonna start a ginger bug. Gotta do that. Uh, make some ginger beer. I've never had ginger beer. I should probably figure out if I like it before I make, you know, gallons of it. But it's probably pretty good. Sounds sounds good. Uh, I'm gonna start some booch. Booch is pretty easy. You just you just buy some booch and buy some tea. I can buy like a pound of black tea for like 10 bucks. I don't know if it has to be high quality black tea. You can mostly get into it for the sugar, for the, for the funk. Uh, <laughs> Scoby eats most of the black tea anyways. You ain't got to worry about that. Um, maybe some cider. Uh, I wish I could play music from this computer. I'm streaming from the other computer. Oh, he's back. Is he? No. How far? Are you? Okay, forty-five. You have to pee every forty-five minutes. We're on episode two. Welcome back. All right. Declan's brew corner complete. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. so, so we get, what's that? So just, uh, I wanted to ask a quick question about, uh, so there are more factions in this show than I remember there being, uh, yeah. where, how do the witches come into play? Well, we don't, how how do we, we haven't we, seen, we, I mean, the witches are just, um, part of the church, right? It's probably just a, like a, you know, it's like the Marines or something. They're still the army. Okay. Just a different. Okay. They live on that big floating uh, butt plug. Okay, because like when when that fucking dreidel showed up, I'm like, what the fuck? I, I don't remember these guys at all. No, and I don't I think we've met to, them before. Yeah, no. I was trying to rack my brain to remember if I if there's been anything involving those cats, but no. No, I don't think so. Um, okay. So, um, episode three. I don't really get it, but Terra's attacks are made of <laughs> flour. He's got flower powers, dude. He's got flower power. F L O U R. Um, the chick's boobies are still hanging out. I'm loving this. I don't know. I yes. don't have many notes because I love it so much. Tsuchi Mikado shows up, uh, and a big robot suit guys, or a bunch of big robot suit guys, start fultoning protesters away. <laughs> I forgot about that. They strap them to balloons or something. Mm. That's good. Uh, Tsuchi uh, beats some of the suit guys and then Accelerator shows up with a squadron of stealth bombers. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he fucking does. Oh uh, my god. Yes. Uh, my, my note is just Accelerator. Fuck. Fucking <laughs> Christ. Because like, that's exactly what this needed to amp up the craziness. Just, uh, but... Uh, See, yeah, so when he's in a rut, he just writes a dude, then a dude shows up standing on a plane. Is yes. he even is he even in the plane? Is he on the plane? I forget. 
He's he's in the plane, okay. but then he jump he jumps out of it. And, Perfect. And, and, There's yeah, so many jumping out of planes. Um, uh, also, they, these these uh, jets just start lasering the fuck out of the city, just <laughs> blank, just utter destruction. And uh, the, uh, so we're trying to figure out how the flower blade works. Um, it it's it is complete nonsense as always. Uh, even more so than usual, I think. I don't like. I guess I understand, but it's like his his power ends up being less useful than just having a regular sword, because a regular sword can cut through two things at once. Correct. His sword can only cut through one thing at once. Mm -hmm. I guess it can project it, but just get really good with like a like a flail or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you know they spend a lot of time explaining something that's going to be defeated this episode. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's funny. Uh, so the, yeah, drag king guy somehow infers Toma's memory loss. Um, and we get our first, he, it's time to punch through a stupid illusion, baby. And he punches yes. him a bunch, a bunch of times. Um, and then, um, he get, uh, he gets firebombed as he's about to tell Toma about Imagine Breaker. He's going to explain something about it that Toma doesn't know perhaps. Um, but he's alive, uh, but he, they beat him. Uh, he gets... You forgot to mention that that accelerator shows up in the pillar of flame, like he he ar arrives inside of this pillar of flame that just you know seemingly kills Terra at the time. Um, but yeah, it's good. And then he, yeah, he gets he gets crushed by popped collar guy. I forget which popped collar guy I'm talking about. Um, but Misaka hears the memory loss conversation. Oh my god! I love it. She knows that he's Peter Parker now. She knows I'm, his struggle. I'm so into this. <laughs> Misaka, it's, Misaka's job is, it's not comic relief, it's like cute relief. They just cut to her occasionally, and she's blushing. And it's, it's good. Um, th this episode was so fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and like, I, I noticed the trend this season, which is that, I mean, obviously, the more accelerator, the more awesome. Um, which you know sounds dumb, but it's the truth. Epic. Uh, and Eben, Eben for the win. But uh, my, my, the win. my first note for the next episode. Oh, also we learn we learn what the what the Pope's up to, and the <laughs> right seat of God is that they're trying to surpass God by getting rid of their sin or something, and they need the power of, um, I, I guess they need index or something to something. to unlock, and, and also the right hand or Toma's right hand or something. I don't know. Uh, that sounds right. Um, episode four, five second recap on Excel. You know what he's about. <laughs> uh, Tsuchi Mikado walks into a bar to arrest a guy and also shoot him. Uh, then accelerator. This, this is when this is when the season gets really good for me. <laughs> um, then uh, accelerator demands his electrodes blueprints. From Frog Doc. Um, and uh, some kid with a silly helmet slices a truck in half with his mind. Uh, then he slices a prisoner in the truck uh, trying to get his handcuffs. And um, I thought that old lady before died, but now she's giving a speech about something. So this is an important thing to mention is that we now are, we're back at Academy City and Correct. all of there's like a bunch of new factions who just popped up. Yeah, like, well, yeah. it's it's there's a bunch of. I mean, basically the like the um. I don't know who's the who's control. I don't know if it's all Alistair's groups or if it's just the Academy City like council or government or whatever. But yeah, it's like Excel has his group. Uh, item? No, he's just in group, right? Is it just called yes. group? There's group, but then there's also there's block member and item. Block item member and school. School, yes. <laughs> um, I looked up what all these are, and um, it's really not explained. Their job is to just do stuff, you know, just kind of. This is, this is their job is just kind of like feel it out, you know. Basically, is like the gist I got from the wiki articles. No, <laughs> like he doesn't. The author does not really. I don't know if he goes into what these. What the differentiation is between these groups of young uh, psychics or aspers, whatever they are. 
Um, so um, we check in on some of the antagonists from Railgun S, um, the group with uh, with Frenda in it. There's uh, Frenda, who's the little blonde one, and then the big, angry, uh, red-headed booby one. Um, they are uh, a big part of the first half of the second season of Railgun, which is the good part of Railgun. Because uh, it's they were the ones fighting Misaka when she was taking out her clone facilities off screen in Index season one, I think it was. Mm. So uh, we met them. If you watched Railgun, if you if you didn't, they're a bunch of weird girls. Oh, they're yeah. I, they're item. That's item. Uh, so I think all of them are okay. They're not all part of Skill Out. Item. Okay, I wrote it all down. Item monitors the boards oh, of directors and keeps them in check. Member reports directly to Alistair. School, unknown, not explained. Block is supposed to, and I quote, keep an eye on the level of cooperation from friendly institutions outside the city, whatever that means. Uh -huh. I don't know. So Block is doing like foreign relations. It's kind of a weird thing to, for a bunch of teenagers to do. Powers. Uh, but Item fights uh, Slicey Boy. Slicey Brain Boy. Um, school has school's the a big one so school has the number two level five accelerators the number one level five I think that's correct okay so they got number two items every, get a, every one of these groups has like their own level five power levels are pretty high here yeah um, items getaway RV is hit by a wrecking ball operated by a little blonde girl in a dress um, and item has this bumbling idiot guy, um, and he jumps off a building to avoid her, and uh, there's a Doppler effect on his screen, which is a good bit. <laughs> I like that. And um, now there's some, then there's some kind of cyber attack uh, that the, that group needs to take care of. So Accelerator jumps out of their RV and into a terrified bystander's convertible. That's so good. <laughs> That shit's so fucking good. <laughs> so, it's, uh, yeah, this is when it starts to get real good and also even more confusing, I think. That's, that, that's like... Uh, I, I think the next two episodes are some of the finest anime I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. Straight up. Straight up. I would, like, in my notes, I've got, like, this is just, just about the damn best anime I've ever seen. It's like... <laughs> I, I had to go look up. I had to go look it up. I'm like... Okay, everybody loves this season, right? No. <laughs> so, so, so I went and looked, and I was very surprised to see that people were not happy. Poorly received. And, <laughs> and very, very upset with the the director, which uh, I don't understand yet at this point. I, I uh, cause like this shit's just ripping. I'm, I'm so into it. I'm, I love all these different factions. I don't really care if I don't understand where they're all coming from because it all feels like it's part of a larger world. Uh, I love that we've got these ridiculously high power levels now and everyone's got their own agenda and it's exactly what I want out of Index. And I'm very happy. Yeah. Um, uh, episode 5, um, Last Order is here. She ditches her ride and uh, is offered help by Uiharu. We have met before, but is more prominent in Railgun. She's Misaka's friend. Got flowers on her head. Uh, Accelerator reaches his destination and a guy from Member hits him with a pipe so Accel shoots him twice. No, three times. <laughs> uh, uh, you did forget to mention that when Accelerator leaves the civilian's vehicle, he just throws money over his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a pimp move. It's good. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's uh, totally in in line with Accel. So the, 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 these fight, this fight you're mentioning with uh, with it, uh accelerator and this teleporty dude is intercut with another fight between like a scientist guy and the number two esper in the city yeah and number two has a member guy trying to catch him they are like these people are super arrogant and they're like oh my god this i'm gonna be able to take down accelerator duh, 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 you know yeah and then it's pretty much immediately turned on its head when you remember that these people are in a completely different class as that as everybody else and Accelerator immediately dismantles teleporty guy. And, he can only uh, teleport then, behind people. Yes, which is a super dumb power. Every teleporter has a weird gimmick or limitation, except for Kuriko. Mm -hmm. uh, another member guy gets flooded. Um, 
I've written, I don't know what's going on, but group has to raid this Esper prison or something. Um, uh, I do have to, uh, I do have to mention as well. Uh, we get introduced to number two's powers, which are, are pretty vague at this point. But the scene yeah. where that happens are fucking, it's fucking awesome because the scientist is prattling on and on and on about like art and stuff and how he abandoned art. And number two just pops these wings out of his back and explodes the building they're in. And it's done beautifully. Like, it's just a perfect way to present how powerful he is relative to everybody else. It's awesome. He's a big boy. Um, then, you know, we talk about how dumb this show is, but this is really the arc where, like, you stop paying attention to this dialogue for 10 seconds, you are fucked. And I mean it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to be, you're not just, you're just going to be, um, you can still enjoy it, but it's like, you're going to be like, wait, oh no, I missed this one line. So much time. Yeah, I did have to go back a little bit sometimes where I'm like, where, where is the Aztec shit coming from? Yeah. Like, uh, now there's, now there's a brown girl. She's with member. Um, uh, okay. Let's see how this joke I wrote last year, uh, goes. I've re- uh, hey, hey, last time I ran into a brown girl with member, I quit Tinder forever. <laughs> oh, Jeez. Oh my god, that's terrible. Um, that's, that's such a good joke. <laughs> Ooh. Um, so then two people from member or block, I can't tell which, they're trying to break someone out. So the lady smashes the dude's head against a wall. Um, brown girl comes at Ed Zali with a Maku Huitl. <laughs> Ed Zali's a guy and she has a weapon called a Maku Huitl. So he kicks her. Kicks real hard. Um, teleport girl, the other one, uh, not Kuroko, beats the lady she's fighting, um, but I think she also lost her feet or something. I, I don't think she does. I, I, okay. I, I was confused by that as well. Yeah, she gets hurt pretty bad somehow, but I don't know. Make it look like she almost gets cut off at the shins. Yeah, she gets kind of sucked into the ground. Um, it's very strange. <laughs> uh, brown girl merged with a grimoire which allows her to turn into ribbons I don't know what that doesn't really you never see what the extent of that power really amounts to because we cut away as, as uh, Aztec magic bro is about to take on this grimoire basically mm-hmm. uh, Yeah, I think Etzali knows her and wants to rescue her yeah, uh, and then my last note for this episode is, oh no, Frenda. <laughs> she gets the fuck beat oh, out of her. Oh no! Oh my god! Frenda was a pr- you know a prominent like sort of like how all the antagonists are like sort of likable and you, you like she very much had a like oh this is just gonna be a good she's gonna be hanging out with every all the other p- previous antagonists with everyone else uh, except for the fact that every time anyone never mentions her in an index discussion there's always a lot of half jokes. Um half puns mm. and that's because uh she uh very soon oh yeah here, here in episode six gets fucked up harder than anyone else in this entire show accelerator shot a lady in the face and friend still gets gets did uh worse than her um friend gets friend is the bisected sound effects, the sound effects of this are crazy <laughs> like like uh nasty just like super squishy and like mm. very visceral. Why, Frenda? Why her? Yeah, she got done real bad. She wasn't that bad. I don't know. Why? The one like most gruesome death. <laughs> How to make it super. Frenda? Uh, She's uh, super cute. That's why it's so effective. Uh, first Symphogear, gear, now this. Uh, number two, his name is Kakine Teitoku or Dark Matter. <laughs> Uh, he shows up at item, and um, uh, one of them gets shot, and their lackey, who's the skill out guy, uh, he takes her to anti skill lady. the The item leader wants to counterattack, uh, so he punishes uh, friend. Uh, but I think her friend already got to her. The lady, I forget mm. how that pans out. I was too traumatized. I can't go back. Can't go back and watch. Um, but the lackey's name is Hamazura. And, um, yeah, the other, uh, item lady, Mugino. I don't remember her being this nasty railgun. She's irredeemable now. 
Yeah, she's like, all oh, these people are disposable. You know, that mm. kind of shit. Nasty lady. Real jerk. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're facing each other now, Mugino and Hamazura. Hamazura jumps on a dang train. Um, and then there's a hard cut to him running through a street and her walking behind him. <laughs> Uh, so she's trying to get a hold of body crystals. Pantene. Uh, so, so, yeah. New body he, crystals. he refuses to let this like Esper girl exfoliation can continue to use these crystals because they'll they'll kill her. Uh, this is the, the most relatable nephews. arc of the entire. Trying to get your female friends to stop using crystals is <laughs> the most. <laughs> really, she's the cleanse auroras. No, oh, the 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 most topical. Most hard hitting uh, plot point of this whole series. So, um, yeah, the crystals make powers go crazy, and she's force feeding them to that other girl. So uh, she shoots her in both, or he shoots her in both the titties, but she's still alive because the crystals. So then he punches her and she just dies. Way to go, Hama. He, uh, he punches her real good. That's the difference. Oh, okay. Uh, I forget. Yeah, also- if you do a good punch, you got to drive the. No, straight into the into the cerebellum. I, be, I believe he had a flashback, which gave him the extra strength necessary to have a good okay. punch. An adrenaline flashback, uh, which, which is an essential component of a good punch. Mm. Um, also, being right, being being correct and righteous in the name of our yes. Lord. Living living your your life correctly is an <laughs> no um, illusions. Illusion free punch. I fucking love this. This, this is good material. Like, one of my favorite sequences here in all of Index because it's it's uh, the impact that Toma has on other people and 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 I love when wait was he the, influenced by Toma somehow with his punch yeah 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 it, it's uh it, it's one of those things where it's like you're not living your life correctly I think he got Toma punched at some point um, what and I don't remember uh, that what was in his flashback uh, I have see. no idea. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's a level zero who takes out a level five. Oh, right. He was in, he was in the last arc of season two. He was like when skill out was, he was in the building and Toma like gave him a speech. Oh yeah, you're right. I remember that now. Yep. So, uh, he redeems himself. Yeah. And, uh, and, and in the form of punch. Harnesses the, is the power face. of the tome, man. <laughs> And protects a hoe by punching another hoe. <laughs> sometimes you, sometimes you gotta punch a hoe by, to save a, or to save to save a hoe. Uh, and, and that's like the first half of the episode complete and fucking awesome. And then it even it just gets better. Oh yeah! Now we get a great fight. Now Dark Meat wants to kill Accelerator. Uh, so he tries to kidnap Last Order, but Accelerator just shows up real fucking fast. So here we go, huge epic battle. Uh, he has it's angel. So he has he has angel wings. Yes, he does. I don't even remember who I'm talking about. I think they both have angel wings at some point. Uh, 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 Accelerator generates these black uh, angel wing equivalents to fight number two, who's got angel wings. Regular angel wings, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. He doesn't have dark matter. Doesn't have vectors or some retarded bullshit. Dark, dark matter doesn't apply. The rules of this world don't apply. Okay. Yeah, because the rules apply so fucking. Uh, steadfastly to Accelerator, who controls the concept of theme. vectors. <laughs> this is the recurring, the recurring theme in this season: is that I'm, obs- I'm even more absurd. Ob- I don't. The rules don't apply to my power. All of the these rules season. we've established, yeah. Uh, it's it's the entire thing. So big this fight. fight is goddamn amazing. Excel's personality is all about proper villainy, um, and now I'm wondering when that happened. <laughs> Yes, it's, that happens in this in this. Season. He just he's just suddenly all about being a good villain instead of just being sort of completely self interested. But I guess okay. Um, I think it's trying to reconcile being a good guy now. He has to be like it's like oh none of these villains have the real decor villain. Da, 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 you know like it's yeah. him trying to come up with a reason why he's fighting for the good side. I don't know. Yeah, he's putting a. Uh, uh, Putting uh, restraints on his villainy, uh, by with with uh, rules, he making rules. A man's making rules. So Axel gets the upper hand by saying something about 
taking dark matter particles into account, which is just how you win in this series. If someone says they figured out your power using nonsense words, and then you say you figured out the <laughs> thing they figured out. Yes. So uh, he's like, I just have to take into account your dark matter in my powers, and then that's how he wins. Is, if you squint in response to that, you lose. You <laughs> your composure. Nani? Yeah, if you hit him on the Nani, or you squint with intensity and then redouble your efforts, it's game over. Or if you're, or if you're too confident and you're too haughty about it, and you're like, huh, impossible. You couldn't have, you can't be thinking about my dark matter that I just told you about. Oh, or a combination of all of these things. Any of them, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, anti skill lady tries to stop Accelerator from shooting him uh, because she has hope for him still or whatever. But then she gets stabbed by Dark Meat. And that's when Excel goes fucking berserk and buries him in the ground and starts just wailing on him. So um, sick. And then Last Order shows up, stops him from killing everybody. Uh, so, she says you know, that's sad. So that makes sense. Just, she's yeah, this, his he's a guardian angel or whatever. This sequence is so fucking amazing. <laughs> at, at, again, like this is this is probably my favorite episode of Index so far. It's it's just uh, the the first half in the you know the influence of the Toe Man, and then the second half the redemption of Accelerator, even in the face of absolute loss, um, is outstanding. It's outstanding. I was floored. I, 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 was, I was moved. I was floored. I don't, it's, and I don't know how a show this stupid is able to do it. I guess it just comes down to them being able, to, the writer being able to masterfully tons of cocaine. use these characters. And, and uh, it really, I, I think the show succeeds in a way that a lot of things fail where it, you know, it over explains its powers, but it's ultimately not at all what it's about. And, it, you know, the more nonsensical the descriptions, it doesn't really matter. All that matters is that the characters are doing compelling things. And I, I, I like the way the characters move around in this universe. I, I think it's wonderful. And uh, Last Order coming to help finalize the redemption of Accelerator is beautiful and touching. Outstanding work. Tell uh, and, you, I, and, you know, regardless of, of what I think of the next arc, I was, or not this next arc, but you know, the way the season goes forward, I thought this particular arc was phenomenal. Nice. Yes, very, very um, pleased. So, school was trying to get these special tweezers that can pick up nano devices that Alistair has strewn about the city. Um, and they're called under underscore line, under line. So that's how he knows everything, I guess. He's got nano devices. But now yeah, Group has son. them. Uh, so that's the end of that arc, I guess. I don't know what we accomplished there, but it was cool. Accelerator beat a guy. What was, real good. What was number two's goal again? I forget. He wanted the tweezers okay. uh, because he wanted to be closer. He wanted to have a direct line to Alistair. And he thought that by becoming number one, he would have Alistair's ear, oh. um, which uh, which Accelerator found to be ridiculous because being number one isn't actually that awesome because it just means people are going to come after you all the time. It's it's lonely at the top. Yes, indeed. But fuck that shit because it's lunchtime at Toma School. Uh, so he goes on a combini run. Uh oh, Itsuwa shows up, uh, does real violence to a teacher. Uh, chasing Toma. That's a confusing sentence. She did. She does violence to a teacher who is chasing Toma. That sounds. I guess that's right. Or she does real violence to a teacher while chasing Toma. I think she. I think she hurts a teacher somehow. Um, I'm, I'm about to watch it unfold on my screen. And we get a uh, new uh, villain, I guess. Aqua of the rear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Man, what what straw did he pull? Do they have to be the rear? Hey. <laughs> Woo. Um, Itsu was here to be a bodyguard, which is fucking awesome. They, or Itsu was a good thing. They know how to get me hooked. Um, Amakusa, remember them? Yeah. It, it, it's a group of people that I remember looking at at certain points. I, they're the, they're the Japanese wing of, like, Necessarius, basically. So they're the Japanese 
cell of the Church of England. It's it's got drug rug Spike Spiegel in it, I think. That, I think that that's... It may, mostly that guy is what you need to know. Yeah. yeah. Even though he's not really important. Um so the Yamakusa have been watching them in bad disguises and discussing her boobs, which is a good <laughs> bit. Um so um uh they they kick a soccer ball into Toma to knock his head into her boobs and then they're high fiving <laughs> in response to that. Excellent. This upsets this upsets Misako though, because she witnesses this go down. Yeah. Oh yes, Misako sees this and is mad. I feel like the Amakusa Samurai Shampoo guy uh, actually does get characterized a bit more here, because he hasn't been in a while since he was like a light villain, in, like yeah. the very first arc of the show or something. Uh, so he's saying stuff, which is nice. Um, Misako's mad. Uh, Amakusa Bail. Uh, Toma brings Isu Itsu a home. Index also mad because he brings a lady home. And she's going to cook and clean. Toma rightfully psyched about this. Understandable. I wish we had a fucking rough life. Oh, I wish we had spent more time with this. I want, I want Itsu a housewife arc. I it want a spin off nice of just her. At least one episode. I want a spin off, mini spin off of her just buying food and cooking and cleaning. Make it warming my up man, towels all day. My man's life sucks. Sous vide towels. He's constantly getting into fights, and you don't got no powers. So having somebody else to help around the house is probably pretty. Yeah, good. what's the biggest break that Toe Man has gotten so far? Like, I don't know. He's stuck with this other mouth to feed, and then she brings home this fucking cat. So now he's got to buy like kitty litter and cat food and shit. Meanwhile, he's a student. And then he's constantly having to go on all these missions around the world. Like, he needs a break. Yeah, well, I want my man to just, like, fucking have one episode where... There should be one gag episode where, like, he's just like, no, it's my day off. And he's just sitting, you know, getting fanned on the on a couch. And everyone else has to deal with the, with the, you know, fucking the ancient saint film, being resurrected and bringing a meteor to Earth or whatever. Just one episode. But that's, but that's not the nature of the Toe Man. Well, yes, that is his thing. to do it. He would have to be forced to. That would be, it. yeah, that would be have to, yeah, you have to do it. It's like, oh, I, uh-huh. I've, I've maxed out my PTO. I can't. I, and, and then they have to, like, constantly keep the fight from going his way so that he doesn't. Oh, yeah, like, we you know, have to let, no, it's his day off. We have to. <laughs> we have to direct him elsewhere. But there's a school over there. <laughs> you know, like that kind of shit. Like, it's it, it, like these ducks are crossing the road. We can't have the fight over there. Somebody has to scurry, get all the ducks out of the way so that we can fight. Let's just call Toma. No, we can't. I'll just. Uh. <laughs> yes. It's like, wow, this is so relaxing. I can't believe nothing fucked up's happened today. Uh, That'd be great. Or no, it, it would have to be like he's just, they're doing all this work to fight this worldly threat to maintain his day off, and he's still just like having a misfortune is like dropping shit and just like <laughs> breaks stuff and like you know gets a sunburn or whatever dumps his ice cream misaka <laughs> kicks him or something and then but then we get like the end of the episode is they can't contain it and and it ultimately ends up going towards him anyway he, and he accidentally he fixes it. it yeah he gets rid of it with a single tap yeah he's mr magoo walking through the city where stuff destro- is destroyed around him he doesn't notice yes um that's an excellent. We gotta, we gotta. I gotta learn Japanese and email that to Katsu. What's his Make name? Make the OVA. Make it. Um. So, Index uh breaks the bath, so it's time to go to a public bath, uh, which is in Sector Twenty Two. Nothing can ever be easy, can it? It's in Sector Twenty Two, which is all crazy, fluorescent, and underground. They gotta go to the. Ride a motorcycle. They to got. Get there. They gotta fo- go to fucking Terminal Dogma to take a bath. <laughs> uh, and Misaka's is there too. And we get some misakas, misaka, misakas, because mm-hmm. she's in the bath. I don't think we've gotten that much uh, misaka nudity ever. You gotta so that's a win. Every little bit we get. So yeah. she's wearing those spats, you know, like you know, or the, those. No, you see. Well, I think we should just see the full ass. I don't know if we get. Well, no, I'm, saying, I'm saying like the rest of the time she got boy shorts on. You know, like it's. Oh nothing. right, yeah, yeah. So you know. You gotta cherish this ass. That would be. I'm not allowed to put that uh, on the stream, so I won't flash it very quickly. Wait, where is it? I'm looking at it. You can't see it. What the? Oh, I don't know. I can't find it now. Oh. It's your son. She, she, we, we, I mean, it obviously isn't important. But the reason she's there is because she wants to collect one of those. Uh, she wants to get one of those little 
uh, keychain thing. Oh yeah, if she's if she's going places, so it's always to get a a frog related piece of paraphernalia. Yep. Good again. Character consistency. That's what we're all about here. Uh, I'm gonna keep that running in the background until I find that ass. But anyways, <laughs> um, they're walking around tonight, even though they know they're being hunted. And and immediately on cue, then it's, it's Aqua shows up. There he is. Um, Toma gets really fucked up, and Itsuwa can't heal him. Uh, he gets fucked up really bad. Probably the worst he's been so far. Uh, um, we have to we have to take a second to talk about Aqua. We gotta we, talk we about gotta talk. <laughs> we gotta talk about my man. <laughs> so Aqua man. is way, okay. You you know what? Yeah, I'll let you. Really delve into uh, the aesthetic of Aqua. First of all, classic short sleeve shirt over top of long sleeve shirt. Co collared, yeah, polo over a long sleeve shirt. My man should be the bully in like like an, a mid two thousands teen drama or something. But um, he looks like he just walked out of fucking buckle. I don't even call him his real his real name is like Willem Orwell or something. But I just call him Travis. Yeah. <laughs> that's what the t on his shirt is for <laughs> yeah it had this yeah it's all this t imagery so he's got this fucking shirt with a giant cross on it like he just walked out of buckle or something and his hair is ridiculous it's like spiked up but then he's got a little bit that comes down over his eye he's kind of like built like zach baggins yes you know, fucking ghost adventures uh i love this man because he's like this honorable knight that dresses like a mid two thousands teenager, and it's lovely. Oh, everyone ready on the stream? This is not an ass incoming. I repeat, not an ass. Okay, you sickos. That's something completely different. I'm not breaking any rules. Someone Look, reported a, our a thumbnail. I put I put boobs in a thumbnail at one point because we had a good episode. Someone reported it. I had to change the thumbnail for one of our episodes. Can you believe it? When, it's it's those Puritans, man. Fucking you watch snitch. Yeah, this is whatever. Oh, are you talking? No. no. Oh, okay. Uh, then I'll continue. As soon as I get... Oh, yeah. There's a good aqua. Waiting for the butt. Butts are... Oh, yeah. Well, I, oh! Forgot to, I forgot to turn on um, low latency, so there's a bit of a delay. Um, but yes. Uh, uh, Toma's in the hospital. Episode 8. Oh, yeah. He's given one day to lose the arm. Uh, but he's in, then he's in the hospital. Each was very sad. Um... She gets a pep talk from Samurai Shampoo guy. Um, Aqua is on the phone when he gets attacked by power suits, but those are not a problem for him. That's when we learn his name is William Orwell. Um, the Amakusa and Aqua meet on a bridge, and Itsuwa is all fired up now. Um, all motivated. Then we wind up at an ice rink. Uh, this episode is a lot of uh, fighting. Itsuwa hat has an attack called Saint Destroyer, which is very convenient because <laughs> uh, Aqua is a saint, by the way, in case we haven't <clears throat> uh, explained that. Very strong. Um, so she uses Saint Destroyer. doesn't work on Aqua because he's no ordinary saint. So he's, he's a double saint. So much for that. Uh, Itsuwa's undershirt somehow gets knocked off. Only that one. Um, Aqua appears to realize something, so he spares Itsuwa, and wants to fight Kanzaki instead. Kanzaki's there. Remember, uh, ripped, ripped jeans girl. No ripped more, jeans girl. No, more no more ripped jeans, but she's back. And so it's time for an Ebon Saint fight. Is she also a saint? I think she is. She was a saint. She got defrocked. Bummer. But, uh, and then uh, Toma wakes up. T has come too. So he did have his relax episode, I guess. Well. I mean, he was hurt very badly, but still. Um, so... Uh, episode 9, Aqua is beating... So Toma, Toma coming back is great, by the way. It's awesome, as always. It's always awesome when my man comes into the fight and just changes the whole paradigm. Yeah, he's he's the Goku. They're always waiting for him. Yep. Uh, Aqua is beating Kanzaki. Um, Misaka and Toma meet up underground. He's trying to limp to this fight because he's always got to be helping. And she tries to talk him out of it. Um, and he's just kind of, sorry, toots, I gotta go. Uh, 
and I just this is when I, I this is when I started. Uh, these are ones I watched recently. I watched this just the other, uh, like you know, last week or so. And I've written, "I need your help, kids. Everyone, put your hands up." There's like a there's like some kind of spirit bomb type thing. I don't know. I think it's I think it's that everybody's going to get involved in this fight because they've been they've been uh, hanging back uh, because they didn't think that they were of the class to fight. You know, here, but that's, they realize that she's going to need their help. That's another thing that happens a lot in this season is a lot of uh, Necessarius or the Amakusa just jumping in and helping in teamwork. I like it. There's <laughs> also a lot of people spewing letters really fast. Right, yeah, Index does a lot of that. But, um, yeah, the Amakusa jump in uh, to the fight with the two, you know. Uh, Aqua is shocked by the power of friendship or something, so he jumps a thousand fucking feet into the air. And crashes down, burning up like a comet. And uh, but then he's stopped by the tow man with his hand. It's good. Towel girl, uh, Itsua claims her first life. Uh, does she take out? Wait, who does she? She doesn't. Aqua obviously lives. I don't know. She does the saint destroyer on him. Oh, I thought that didn't work. I guess it works now. Whatever. Uh, Aqua has a flashback. Um, tow man. Uh, wakes up again, gives him a towel. Great. Uh, Index is angry. Can you believe it? Again. <clears throat> uh, Tsuchi Mikado uh, teases Kanzaki about Toma, uh, and he tells her to use the boobs on him. It's good. And uh, kind of sets her up against Itsua. We get a little uh, mischievous here, Tsuchi Mikado. Um, and then we meet uh, Fiyama, and he's talking to the Pope. Uh, talking about having to do something in Europe. Um, Fiamma, I don't know if we learned this now, but Fiamma's the leader of the right hand. He's he's the right side right of side? the thing. Yeah. Pope is fucking pissed, so he uses Pope magic and freezes him in amber or something. Oh, it's some hype shit. He it says like, it's like, you're going to freeze you for 40, 40 years. 40 years. Um, I, I, I wrote, something tells me he's, he'll get out before then, and he immediately <laughs> gets out. Yeah, Masaka. Pope, it, so then he blows up the Pope. Pope Pope's hurting real bad. Um, uh, and then um, Pope is like, you can tell the Pope is just really ineffectual at this point because even Piercing's Lady, remember her? Even Piercing's Lady not taking shit from him mm. anymore. Uh, forget her name, whatever. Uh, but she's going to go fight Fiamma anyway in Britain, the UK. But uh, the Vatican just fucking explodes from the inside because of this pope attack which is great i like to imagine just imagine if the vatican just exploded from the inside one day and they were just like eh, just, yeah don't worry about it the pope got could, into an you, argument could you imagine what? oh no <laughs> um i gotta fucking pee again I'll be right oh my god elaster is still keep scheming going. Keep going. everything's going in keikaku dory and it's time for a plane ride to britain it's time for a plane ride to britain finally i can switch screens guys look how cute she is she puts on her plane ride outfit probably gonna be cold actually the air conditioner blasting on you those shoulders be rough it is adorable though give it that um yeah we're at episode 10 i swear we don't have that much more yeah we'll be under two hours it's fine oh yeah oh this is some of the best stuff can't, I can't talk about this while he's not here. Let's talk about something else. Um, that was it. He's already back. Never mind. We're not going to talk about anything else. Fuck you. And you, pee, you don't have to pee. You pee too fast to have to pee. Uh, it's uh, If you consider that my tiny bladder makes me pee that fast. You should, it's just this huge prostate. You got too much. Of course, it you got, flames. You got too, too much cum. Yeah. Uh, and this is when I started to realize, hey, um, there's a lot of shit going on in the e these episodes. I wonder if they had to condense a whole lot of light novel into not very many episodes. Here. That's when stuff's good. You want it to be as fast paced as possible. All thriller, no filler. Yeah. Um, episode 10, Itsuwa is reading up on man advice because of Kanzaki. Mm -hmm. She feels she feels the pressure, uh, which is great. Misaka... Uh, tells Toma that she knows about his amnesia. We're still fucking on this. We're still talking about the goddamn amnesia. He lost six episodes of memory. 
This is episode 58, and this is still a major plot point. It's because we get to get her talking about it. 58 episodes and a movie. It's he forgot perfect. He forgot like three days and also the rest of his life, but that doesn't matter ever. His parents, whatever, who cares? Except for, except for that one arc where his parents, but it was like a funny thing. Yeah, it was fine. <laughs> they still love him. Who cares? Uh, whatever. But there's good Misaka content here. In yeah, it's all in service of, the, of that, and that's what matters to me. Right, right, right. Uh, How do they always meet by this vending machine? It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, amazing, it's like the couch gag. It's like you can, you know, it's the best part. When I see that vending machine. Yeah, yeah, it's good news. It's just pure I'm dopamine. And I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be a classic scene, and it always is. Your yeah. kick? Oh. Um, and this one's good too. But uh, before they head to Britain, Index offers Toma some food, which surprises him. And then a fucking smoke grenade crashes through his window. And then they're off to Britain. <laughs> so I guess he, they fucking smoked him to get him. I don't know why they had to gas him to get him on the plane. I don't know. I like the absurdity of it. And that Tsuchi Mikado no longer thinks of him as a person who he needs to regard with any sort of respect. <laughs> I mean, he's basically just a means to an end. It's like, yeah, just Whereas, get in here, whatever. We need we need a badget breaker now. Yeah, know. just come on. Uh, they need index in Britain. Makes sense. She's a British library. Um, there was some kind of tunnel explosion in France. So now they're loading uh, stuff from France onto Thomas Plain. So nothing can go wrong here. Mm -hmm. It's just like, apparently, like, I don't know if it's stuff from the tunnel, but it's, it's like, you'd think... Maybe that would be some kind of risk. I don't know. Um, it's, they, but they explain it's like it's like a soylent shipment, I guess, that's going on in their plane. Liquid food. Um, so then uh, we got a like a a, a who done it plane mystery episode. There's a plane murderer on the loose in this 500 passenger fucking 797. You know whatever. Um, there's a mystery French terrorist passenger, and he. Briefly holds Index hostage, and then messes with a huge electrical panel just right next to a passenger seat that you can just get into and mess with the plane's internals. Not even in business class. It's just there. No, they're giving it to the riffraff. It's because the riffraff don't have the smarts to do it. Yeah, yeah. It's the business class you got to watch out for. Those are the real sneaky ones. That's true. Uh, Index, or, uh, Toma tries to find him, but all these fucking whiteies look the same. All these mayo-ass... Um, Crackers. And the whole time he's talking to like a flight attendant and this guy who it turns out is the captain. You'd think he'd be like in the cockpit. I don't think they're supposed to leave. He's just yeah, hanging that's out. The that's the thing is that nobody actually flies planes anymore. It's all just so he's uh, just been in the autopilot. He's just been in the fuselage drinking. Yeah, exactly. What do you where do you think those tiny little 150 doing benzos? Go? Yeah. Well, he's only getting paid twenty thousand dollars. That's the only way I can get it. He has to numb himself to to distract from the guilt that he's cheating on his wife in so many Southeast Asian countries. Oh my God, it's horrible. It doesn't count if they're dudes. He doesn't check their 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 driver's licenses. He doesn't know how old they are. Oh God. He doesn't want to know. He doesn't want to know. He can't bear it with the guilt. Pro plausible deniability. He's like, well, they're probably of age. <laughs> uh, I swear. There was the so much. She had, is probably just genetic. She had so much hair. It had to, you know. Uh, um, uh, so there's the terrorist, and also Necessarius is trying to bring the plane down. Uh, not with the terrorist though. They're just trying to bring it down. I don't know. Uh, but there's Scottish magic. Oi, oi! What do Scottish people say? Oh, don't they fuck? They fuck sheep. Oh, laddie! That's Southern that's Wales. Southern. That's Welsh yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, Scottish magic interfering with the British magic. But then Toma punches the guy. Mission accomplished. Um, the guy had like a whalebone knife or something, but it just broke when it fell to the ground. So kind of a shitty knife. And oh, never mind. There's more terrorists in the hold. And um, this dude is about to uh, blow up the plane with a grenade. Yes. And then he hears a noise. And points a gun at the noise instead of just pulling the pin on the grenade. <laughs> well, he doesn't want to... He's oh, about yeah, to he blow himself up. Anyway. Yeah, no, he's literally about to suicide bomb. And then he's like, oh, a noise. Who said that? What? Um, you know, maybe he's reluctant. It's, yeah, I guess. Uh, he's not, you know, 
He's not that radical. That's yeah. Uh, any excuse to not, you know, cold feet. Um, and now, uh, steel, steel is here on the wing of another plane, flying next to him, and uh, he takes care of that somehow. And then we get introduced to a bunch of uh, cute girls in a car driving through the British countryside. There are new villains for this arc. And then uh, episode 11, we finally land uh, in Britain, in Bongland. Oh my god. In Indi- Talk about, uh, yes. People complain about that, about that berserk. They you sure know, do. About when they're on, the, on they're on the ship, but this plane thing was way worse. We were on there for like a whole full episode before we got to eight Great years. Britain. I guess we, you know, it has been eight years. It has yeah, been we eight were years, on that so. plane basically for eight years, if you think about it. Index is hungry. No way. Um, but they go to Buckingham Palace. Just immediately, they've been in the UK for four minutes. It's time to meet the Queen. Fucker. Let's go. Queen Elizard. Uh, she's great, by the way. What's he trying to tell us? Queen Elizard. Hmm. Mm. Uh, got a huge sword. Uh, there's a gag when we meet her about how she's like not dressed. She's like, you know, she's imp- impro- improper, not uh, very queen like behind the scenes. Yes. Uh, we're uh, we we're, were revealed to, but she's got a big old sword. And then uh, we meet the three princess princey princesses. Um, Prince Chai, actually. Um, princess one. Mo- Monaid, Monid, Monaday. I I don't know if it's necessarily important to remember the name, so we'll be honest. I might have just misspelled this. I don't know. Princess two has tits. Princess three is plain, normal. Yes. Um. She does have a monocle, though. Oh yes, I have a great screenshot of the mon. Oh. Oh my god. So good. Wait, let me just. Yes. That's the best face in the whole show. Um, so there's selfie goofs with the princesses. They want to get in Thomas selfie. Um, so the reason they brought Index is to see if the explosion in France involved magic, I guess. Um, meanwhile, Toma is with Safari Lady. Oriana's back in a convertible with her, and she's being all flirty. And she also she's again, she's good now. She works for the Brits. I guess uh, the terror girls their group is new light and one of them is a doofus who has a suitcase mix up gag and she's like oh no which one is mine so she has to carry all these suitcases through the street mm-hmm. and also she has a spear and is very strong and the spear does fire um, she also got a tail yeah meanwhile new light girl number two gets chased by necessarius and she blows up Itsua. She's okay, though. Um, and we learn that these suitcases are teleporters. You can teleport things between the suitcases. Mm-hmm. Um, new light girl number one, whose name is Lesser, I guess, or her code name. She uses her suitcase, and they accomplish whatever they were doing with the suitcases. And then she gets shot uh, at by an arrow from far away. Um, and what was in the suitcases was another sword, a good one. This one's better. It's the oh, same, but better. Sword. It's a gooder sword. This one's the real one. And it goes straight to princess number two, Titties. She's in on it. It's a coup, baby. Woo-hoo! Let's go. It's a coup. There's our episode title. Um, whoa. Uh, I gotta be honest. I was lost for most of this arc. Uh, Do you get I mean, it now? Like, are you are you clear? Everybody, are we clear? Everybody enters the fray here. There's narrative. Everybody's part here. That's, that's underrepresented. Everyone's showing up here to help out with this fight. Uh, not here, obviously, not yet. But this coup brings a lot of people to Great Britain. What I'm confused about. Oh no. Uh, I think I might have just answered my own. Did the uh, didn't I think at some point. All the Catholic girls got converted. Is that what happens to Agnese and all her nuns? To what? To the English, to the Anglican church? The English church? That's why oh, they're all here, right? I think that happens at one point. I think they, get, they just straight up get like forcibly converted with some like medallion. 
Um, Something like that happens, maybe? I don't, I don't remember. Okay. That's got to be why they're here. I don't think they're still Catholics. Um, Ep 12. Um, this is where we really start to... It's like, oh, okay, this is what England is in this universe. Because it's like... Academy City is just like a f somewhat futuristic city. But other than that, it's normal other than the magic people. England is just ruled by armored knights and, w and witches. And it's fucking yes. great. The witches live on a giant butt plug, as we explained. Um, and it's just whoever has the strongest magic sword rules it. And it's just like basically full fantasy now. And that's, that is another thing that I enjoy about this show is that um, every... every Everybody's firing, firing giant lasers, but the reasons they're firing those big dumb lasers are different and entertaining in their own way. And I love this intersection of like mysticism, fantasy, magic, science, in quotes around science, you know, mm -hmm. it's just a hoot. Also, what, what, where, do, where, does, where do the holy powers come from in this? If you're like in the church, is your power literally coming from God himself? Is God everything comes from God? God himself, you fool? <laughs> is we're gonna meet God? Is Toma gonna punch God in the face? No, is, definitely not. I, he will punch the Pope in the face. Well, he might even, he might not even punch the Pope. The Pope God. is gonna fight. I don't know if Toma is gonna fight the Pope. Um, Pope is definitely gonna be involved in an altercation. Well, he just got fucked up. So, yeah, I, mean, no, I, I bet he'll come back with a vengeance, Pope vengeance. He's going to unlock some other holy powers. He's going to channel the power of God. Um, but I would love for, for Toma to punch God in the face to tell him he's not living his life correctly. Punches three concentric circles in the face. Yes. <laughs> the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, you can make... Okay. Just make him Doctor Manhattan, but with the concentric circles on the on his head instead of like an atom, and uh, that'd be great. You can have a penis and stuff. That'd be that'd be you. I yeah, you couldn't make that work. That's there. There, it is still possible for this show to jump the shark. You can't have him punch God unless he turns out to not really be God. He's a faker. Mm. Oh, he's a false god, and that's what Toma can yell at him when when he's punching him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's definitely something that could happen. Oh, you know what? Maybe that's what the right seed of God, the the right to the right. I don't know. To the right, to the right, to the left, to the left. <laughs> people are. <laughs> I don't know what their deal is. Uh, but I Directions. think the to the right is is gonna attain the power of God. Their goal is and to ascend somehow. Yeah, I don't think fully to Godhood, but like as close as you can get reasonably. Yeah, I think. And I think that he'll declare himself God. And then Toma will smite him. Oh, what if Toma's hand is actually God? What uh, is right everything hand? is God, you fool! Uh, what is the nature? How many of times God do I have hand? to explain? Um, yeah, it's we hinted at. We'll learn something about it at some point. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, so yes, the knights and the witches are jousting in midair. <laughs> Fucking all right, sweet. Um, Agnese does a magic trick to go under a dock. Very proud of herself to escape the knights. Uh, the <laughs> queen is fucking freaking me out. Her head proportions are all wrong. She looks like a weird caricature. She's fucked up. There's a big golem, uh, controlled by Sherry. Sherry's back. Mm-hmm. Brown, brown blonde lady. Uh, Kanzaki is taking on, uh, the princess, uh, or never mind, she's taking on her butler, Princess Butler. Gets her ass kicked, um, she, which she's is. She's got a bad track record. This I was, I, I was thinking, like, wasn't she evenly mashed against like a saint? Why is she? And then they immediately, immediately explain that he's stronger than a saint because he's very strong. He's a knight. He's technically an angel. Uh -huh. That this butler. So, um, the butler and the princess are about to execute the boring princess. With a big sword. Or no, with an axe. But then a guy with a big sword shows up. There he is. My mid-2000s 8th grader dressed Saint Boy. Aqua's <laughs> on it. Um, so a lot of Saint versus Butler fighting these next couple episodes. It's an Obi-Wan Darth Vader thing. They used to know each other. 
They reference uh, a previous fight they had. They were brothers. Yes. Meanwhile, Toma is hiding on a train, transporting the New Light girl back to base because she's unconscious or something. I don't know what the fuck happens to her, by the way. But uh, he meets another girl named Floris, and he breaks her magical handcuffs too crudely. So there's an alarm that goes off, and they jump out of the train on a bridge. <laughs> and luckily, she has like these heat sinks on her back that are also like flight devices. Um, so they are able to sort of stop themselves as they head again into the drink, heads in the water. Uh, and we keep cutting back to this fucking ebon sword fight in the woods. This is the dumbest fight I think we've ever had. It's glowing red and blue swords in the woods. It's not a well animated fight. It is the most that it has ever been deviant art where you've got like, the swords are big and ridiculous and they're all pointy in many different directions. And, and at one point he literally says, it looks like I'll have to use that. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's it teleports behind you levels of ridiculous. And they just keep talking about the future of Britain. And I, I know there are people watching this <clears throat> and being like, damn, this is an amazing Brexit metaphor. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but there's a big uh, explosion. We and, need to talk about Index Season 3. Yeah. Uh, uh, striking parallels. Um, and uh, one of my favorite bits in anything, whenever it comes up, it always gets me hot lady hitchhiker getting passed by. Um, uh, fucking Laura Stewart is with the queen. They got captured. And Laura tries to hitchhike, lifts her dress up. And not only does a guy not pick them up, but he burns out and pops a Yui. Yeah. <laughs> like, why do you have to go the opposite direction? Yeah, yeah. But you can't even, you have to go back. Like, oh, it's so good. Strike Widges did that bit. It was great then, too. I, I'll, I'll never not find that funny. Um, but then the Queen and Laura Stewart escape on, like, horseback. My first note for episode 13 is horse blue teeth. Because I was typing very fast, but they didn't <laughs> color in the horse face, so all of its teeth and gums and the inside of its mouth are all the same shade of blue with its face. Mm. Doesn't look great. Um, Index and Rocket Girl uh, run into Princess Number Three. Wait, was that, was that talking about Toma? Toma and Rocket Girl run into Princess Number Three. Um, and. Uh, Meanwhile, in the fight, the butler is indestructible because he can say a word and make the attacks go away. But then butler analyzes his... Uh, oh, no, uh, that's uh, not a butt, but uh, butler uh, is really analyzing um, Aqua's sword symbol in the middle of this fight. And uh, he's like, what? Your alliance is confusing to me. Uh, and then Aqua just fucking gets him. I'm not really uh, sure he how... Gets, he gets some bite by, by attacking him in directions at once. He has a surprise chain on his sword or something. So that beats an, a literal angel, I guess. Quote-unquote angel. They already did, like... I just pull my punches before I punched you, and that makes the punch work. You know, remember that? Mm -hmm. um, Toma is walking through the woods towards the sword noises, and... Um, uh, runs into the princess and the princess has this super powerful ancient sword and I think this is the dumbest ability maybe in the entire show and not in a good way she can summon uh, cubes and 3D objects and that's it the way they explain it is that it's actually a 4D objects shadow but it's literally she's just sending polygons through the air to hit people she, she's doing some kingdom hearts fucking kingdom hearts boss fight shit just like i'm gonna swipe and then these cubes are gonna slowly go at you yeah just cubes just big cubes and triangles and shit whatever yeah, yeah. no that's really the least creative power we've seen but, uh, then, but then later on we we learned that maybe there was extra power that she could have been wielding but didn't i don't know what like, i don't what, remember oh and the, the power gets turned over to the hands of the people at a certain point <laughs> Oh, well, I guess. Yeah. Uh, God damn, this princess is so fucking hot. <laughs> it's something about her disdainful, sadist eyes. Oh, no. So sharp. 
For me, it's the cubes. You like the cubes? I love the cubes. Because oh. you know those are hypercubes. You want to fuck a cube? Yeah. Ah, oh, the perfect symmetry. Endless eroticism. Endless symmetry. <laughs> no, there is nothing I find sexier than symmetry. The only thing that's you know, the only thing sexier than consent. Symmetry. Identical twins, sorry. Well, I I'm not waiting to hear that wait, yes. Wait, 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 wait. Could be symmetrical. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm oh, I'm yeah. saying I would rape you have no choice. identical <laughs> twins because the symmetry is hotter to me than the idea it's, of consent. It's twins as you're pouring ether rags. You're shaking violently. <laughs> my one weakness um so uh travis tells toma about fiamma uh he and index are picked up by necessarius uh misaka meanwhile eating a burger eating a salisbury uh steak it looked a, tasty. A lo I, she's eating alone in a family restaurant, and she's boob jealous of all the other girls in the restaurant. It's just she got a miserable life. Who's got the yeah? Who's got the fukioda now, bitch? Uh, she hasn't fought anybody in a hot minute. She's huh? such a dork. Yeah, <laughs> she's great. <laughs> she's like she's like a level five, one of the most powerful people in the entire city, and she's just. Smack it down on some hamburger. She's a she's a loser. <laughs> she just wants to collect little frog toys and like uh you know eat. It is funny soda. that the, that the toe man is out always out there getting himself into shit. Even the power is that he's lame. And meanwhile, God God level fucking BBBD is just smacking and being, being upset about her cleaves. Yeah, eating it at TGI Fridays. Um. But she gets a call from Toma, and he needs just help with a thing that involves electricity, sort of, which is mm -hmm. funny. Uh, and uh, she blushes. That's the bit. Uh, this has got to pay off, right? It's uh, we end with the arc was over. I don't know, man. No, 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 no. I'm saying the, the Misaka the Toma stuff's got to pay off this season. Oh, like Somehow. eventually? What do you think they're gonna kiss? God. What are you retarded? No, but we're gonna get a something. We're well, yeah, he'll be on, he'll land on top of her, or, or she'll be, like be, be really aloof. She'll blush and say something sort of nice to him, whatever. Uh. Ah. <laughs> uh. So this whole time I'm asking, hey, what happened to Princess Number One? Because it's only been two and three so far, but uh, they're uh, Toma and. Uh, Princess 3 and Index are wandering through this underground tunnel because they have to open something. And that's how they get to Buckingham Palace. Um, and they run into a big mummy golem made of paper. And while they're fighting that, uh, so, uh, Princess 2 can't handle the sword. Get it? Handle? Mm -hmm. But she throws up a bunch of blood. Too powerful. Um... And they open the tunnel and they beat the the golem, and then um, all the good guy factions are about to have this big fight. So first they got a feast, and they have a big old night picnic. All the former antagonists are here, even the Gatlicks. Um, Itsuwa is sweaty. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, <laughs> Does something to you, huh? I didn't say that. This it's Itsu a character. I didn't say anything. No? Uh. Yes. What do you want me to say? I do like uh, Samurai Champloo's proclivity for pulling out outfits. I'm enjoying yeah. that, as that a lot. <laughs> put, the, put this on. Yes, yeah, a lot of comic relief here. Boob talk. Outf Calm scant the storm. Scanty outfits. Um. And, uh. Oh, and there's, uh. There's princess number one. Her and the queen and Laura are all scheming together. Something. I do have to say, I love the queen. She's not, funny. The, not the real queen. Fuck the real queen. But the, yeah. the queen, I like everything the queen does in this show. She. I, it's funny that she's the queen and she's always just sort of happy-go-lucky. Yeah. 
Weird She's sword. also always in go mode, which yeah. I respect. Unlike the real queen, who's mostly in old mode at this point. <laughs> Oh, maybe like have to go mode because she got those adult diapers on. Lab tools here. Where am I? Why am I sub to you? Fucking why are you asking me that? I never even heard of you. <laughs> I only have like eight subscribers. I've never even seen your name. You're nobody. Angry I don't want any. I don't. I don't want anyone to watch these. Here. These aren't good. What's that? Angry Mage has been out here, yo. He's been repping. This guy, this new guy shows up and thinks we're going to pay attention to him? <laughs> Fuck. Thinks we're going to dedicate five minutes of the stream to, to roasting him? Bitch, we've already been going for a straight two hours. Fucking, think I got time for your lab tool? I'll show you a lab tool. Here it is. I did it. I made the joke. You got anything else? Got any other, uh, got any other sick burns? No, I was gonna move on. No. I can't click on his, can't click on his username. I can't figure out any. Uh, I can't make fun of him. Well, not that I wanted to direct any more attention towards this fool. But he, he, he has more subscribers than us. <laughs> How dare he look down on us? Yeah, looking down, you know, all these elites. He's messaging. He he's messaging us from from Little Saint. Uh, Jeremy Island. Wait, what's the name of the island? Uh. Little St. James. How come the Batobi CPU video video has so many more views than all the rest of them? Good thumbnail. She is cute. I try not to. I try not to make the thumbnails too good because then I know all the views are just because of the thumbnail, not because of the intense quality. Of our talking, of our conversations. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I can't imagine why it wouldn't we wouldn't be attracting a lot of listeners with this episode. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody loves the first half of season three of Index. <laughs> it's all they want to hear about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, a year late takes In, on Index season three. Two hours of detail on two every plot point. Two hours of detail, of which all of which is completely ridiculous and impossible to follow anyway. And our half baked descriptions of what's going on in the episode. My notes went to shit like three episodes ago. This is like the worst part of the stuff that we watched, too. It's kind of like, I mean, really, yeah. we're, you got to get through a little bit to get to the good stuff again. Yeah, this is the last episode we're on here. Right, let's put some energy into it. Let's 14. put some energy into it. Let's go. Oh. Come on. Shots, Pick everyone. Take some nose, nose torque. Nose torque. Okay, I'm going to do nose torque, but instead of nose torque, it's vodka. Can feel it in my groin. I was meant to buy nose torque. Never got around to it. Sounds painful. Right, you, I'm, I'll buy some nose torque while you're doing this. Yeah, I want live, live nose torque purchases. I think I think it was too expensive, and we didn't buy it. No way. You can get one bottle for nine dollars. Probably lasts a while. I would think. Well, one bottle. One bottle is ten dollars after shipping. Yeah, that's not too bad. Episode 14. What's, what brand should I get? Should I get Nose Torque or should I get Skull Smash? Nose Torque. The Ridge. The OG. Um, so final episode of this arc. Um, they're driving to Buckingham Palace in a truck. Truck gets exploded by hyper triangles. Um... There is a princess fight. The cowardly princess has procured a crossbow and um, is facing off against bad princess. There's a bunch of silly gliders. I forget what was up with those. They were flying over the city. Um, too much of the OST in this season is like a, it has like a swing vibe. It's like swinging. It's like Where's a, my oons? Bring back the oons. Yeah, it's not as much mid two thousands like trance oons. It's like it's like swinging like daddy o music. I don't, I don't get daddy -o it. Daddy music. Um, Kanzaki saves Toma. Um. Uh, then she fights princess. Fight's not fight doesn't look great. Um, and then there's another instance of all my friends are here to help out. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he acts surprised about this. They had literally had a feast because they were going to battle. 
So that's weird, a weird thing for him to not expect. Um, uh, but I was expecting the princess to be a lot stronger, the way the butler hyped her up. Because he was like, she's even way stronger than me. But she's already getting fucked up. Um, and also the music is good now. They switched it. And... Let's I liked see. how she was just raining like hellfire missiles and cluster bombs from the sky during this fight. I I appreciated that, where she wasn't just limiting herself to using her magic powers, but also using sheer military force, which you think would create a lot more destruction. Oh yeah, she's just calling in tomahawks from which from is pretty cool boats. Uh, and oh yeah, she I've written okay, I've written boobs. Orders missile launch bunker cluster. Is, is Bunker Buster copywritten? Does like Lockheed Martin have a trademark well. on Bunker Buster? Or did he think Bunker Cluster sounded funnier or better? But Butler comes back, stops the missile. She orders more missiles. Aqua's back. Saints back too. They team up. They're friends now. Um, she launches more boxes. It's very dumb. Queen. Queen's here. My queen. She, <laughs> uh, she whips out a huge flag, a yeah, this huge is, this Union is when Jack. So it got me right back in. Oh, it's <laughs> it's this is a good. Uh, oh yeah, good climax. Whips out the flag, the powers of the flag, the Union Jack, and whatever the lion is called. You know, whatever. It's it, it's like a an inverse spirit bomb. She, she diverts the power from the sword all to the people of. The people of uh, of Britain. You know what? I'll tell you what. Nothing has ever made me want to leave the EU more than this. I was so ready to destroy the EU the second she pulled out that flag. I'm Just like, fuck those losers. It's such a weird, like, yeah, Britain, known for its democracy. We're just going to, like, yes, everybody is a... Uh, Literally a queen. There's, <laughs> yeah. And then there's a weird, like... It's almost like the writer, like, apologizing for all this retarded Britain shit. Toma goes, like... But what a country where everyone can be a protagonist. <laughs> uh, she, everybody's like, we gotta get to Buckingham Palace in there. And they're like, just all, all running at once. Like, we're gonna be superheroes. Everybody's uh, a protagonist. Everyone is white. Like, what is, what do British people think of Britain? It's like that weird disease where Japanese, or what do Japanese people think of Britain? Where Japanese people go to France and become confused and distraught at how shitty it is. <laughs> Mm. it's like that where he's just like yes in britain where everyone is like this uh strong uh confident working class aryan hero <laughs> well honestly it would be more like in great britain they just keep their heads down and keep delivering that fucking milk dude keep keep calm and carry on during everyone, the middle of this fucking everyone goes like a battle everyone goes to the local pub yeah, it's like, oi, you're right, cunt. Oh, fucking. I feel so powerful. I'm going to the fucking local. Oi, the absolute mad lad's bombed three of the points already. He's going 4-4. Four, four. In real life, oh, it would be like, holy shit, they just bombed Buckingham Palace. Good fuck that cunt. And then they go <laughs> and go to the local. You guys remember Margaret Thatcher? She was a right cunt, too. <laughs> I will not eat a bite of food until Margaret Thatcher is dead and buried. Reference to it. Sorry, I'm just I'm just thinking about how much booze you could drink if you were a superhero. Is that uh, at the beginning of the stream? Angry Mage mentioned he's watching The Boys, which is. I think I briefly saw like part of a preview for that and it seemed to be I feel like there's been multiple of those recently where it's just like what if superheroes were toxic yeah. dude bros and it's like wow what a fucking original well you know what it was is like oh shit HBO's got a Watchmen we need to uh we need something real quick that subverts the Watchmen yeah cuz uh fucking um who's uh uh uh, pedo tweeter guardians of the galaxy spike uh, Ralph help me out <laughs> I don't fucking remember his name guardians uh, of the galaxy director down of the dead oh god slither I'll do it what are they thinking the right guy are you talking about suicide squad Wait, uh, oh did he oh Zack Snyder directed down of the dead 
Who wrote it? Yeah, yeah, no. I, James Gunn is, is James is Gunn. The, James Gunn. Yeah, he got got because he was making those jokes. No, he's still making movies. He just made a movie where what if Superman was bad? You know. Oh, that's what yeah, that's like, what Bright Burn is apparently, and he's still yeah, doing. Uh, he's, he has a big one lined up. I don't remember. He's what, doing a Guardians of the Galaxy three, but uh, oh, he's still on that. He got brought back because everybody protested, and Disney's like, yeah, okay, so never mind. Uh, um that being said uh, uh man have you seen anything from that new watchman show uh no why would i sweet jesus fuck oh my god it, it looks so ass it looks like it, it, it's uh it, it takes place after watchman i guess and it basically everybody turned rorschach into a hero there's like a, an icon of the people even though he's kind of like a fascist asshole of the comic Oh and everybody's gosh. wearing it as if it was like a like a Guy Fox mask, and they're like, "We are the people. We're gonna rise up." And it's just embarrassing to look at. Oh my god! Striking parallels. No, you don't get it, man. Oh my god, it's deep. Uh, I so bet deep. a Roar, I bet a Rorschach guy says "Make America Great Again" or something within one word of that at one point. I think they're gonna make him be right, which is weird. But anyway, <laughs> uh, how's that Doom Patrol? <laughs> I haven't I haven't checked out a second of it yet, even though I want to support Brenny Phrase. Great. Uh, but uh, the comic's great. Cool. Um, okay, we're finally finishing this up. Um, he finally gets the punch on the princess. It's a good one, too. It is a good one. It's only a couple frames, but it's a good one. He punches through the sword and then punches her face. It's pretty good. Yes, In dual shot. Punch. Um, oh God, I'm going to find the cap here. I'm going to find it. Yes. <laughs> it's drawn so cartoony. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> uh, so punches that queen's face still freaking me out. There's Fiamma. He just shows up. Toma stops him from killing the princess. Um, Fiamma is like this dude in like a zoot suit. It's very mysterious. He whips out this ancient artifact that does something weird to index. Um, and then that's sort of uh, the arc. Uh, index is in another like memory loss coma. Um, it's another like uh, it's, something was allowing her to not just be a dictionary and be a person, but now she's in fucking developer got, got mode. So to Russia. Let's go. Uh uh, stakes have been upped, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Stakes have been upped. Um, congratulations if you made it through this one. Please. No. What are you doing? What's wrong with you? I'm ashamed that I made it through this one. Um, anyway, uh, I don't, I, 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 honestly, this last arc was a little tough, but, um, I still had enough goofiness to get me through. All the stuff with Accelerator this season was badass, mm. and, uh, I thought, the uh the the toma aqua fight like that that whole arc there where you know they were going to take his arm or whatever was sweet too i gotta say i i'm not as down on this season as other people are so far i guess i'm not either yeah uh i i it seems like people were calling for the director's head and shit over this and i'm not really sure why it's i guess maybe the source material it's always you know you have eight years of like imagining this source material and it just ends up being, uh, you know, it, you imagine it is so much better than it actually is. That's all adapted works. Like, it's just usually they're fresher so you don't have like eight years to imagine what the show could be. Well, it, it, it turns out that it's just more of the same thing. You know, it's like, what were you expecting really? Like, I have not... I did not wait that long for index, so I guess I didn't really have to suffer the way that other people did. Were like, "Oh my God, please give me more," and then you know you're you're let down. I couldn't be let down because I just realized what an index was like two years ago or three years ago or whatever. So like, to me, this is just more index, and it might be like a little lower in quality at points, but it still has really really high highs. And you know, as long as the tow man's still punching people and accelerators still accelerating, I'm happy. They're still working with, uh, yeah, good material. Um, yes. uh, yeah, this this arc doesn't have 
as definitive of an ending as most of them. Usually, um, it's really, you know, like, okay, Tom was in the hospital, Index is mad at him. That means it's the end of the arc. But uh, uh, this is like, oh, man, we're just kind of heading right into, there's not even going to be that much levity. It seems like we're heading straight uh, to the, the motherland. This is uh, this is our Archduke Ferdinand moment, man. There's no turning back now. We're in. Sure. We're, we're full blown into this world war. I know that this season ends. The next episode, the, this they do do the World War Three arc. It's like the last six episodes this season, six or eight or something. So we're gonna we're gonna get there. Is that all the index that exists? How much more index is there after the World War Three arc? I assume there's a whole fucking lot. Oh, good. Uh, because he that dude cannot stop writing. Um, will they adapt it into uh, animated form? Yeah. How did this one sell? I don't know. Um, so. Okay, so there's. Okay, so. Certain Magical Index, the novel, ended in 2010. Oh wow! So last the last um, volume is called well, it's just called Twenty Two Proclamation of Armistice. That probably ends with World War Three, I assume. But then there's Tuaru Majutsu no Index SS. Now that's from two thousand seven to two thousand eight. So that's not a sequel or anything. Okay, <laughs> New Testament, right? Oh god. New Testament to our Romanjutsu Index 2011 to 2019. There are how many volumes? 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 Oh, 21 20, Oh. Oh my god. 22 volumes. So let's to put that into perspective, the original index, which is the three seasons we've spent years talking about at this point, was 22 volumes or 22 Okay. I think so these are volumes. Is, once we finish this, there will be as much we will, text in front of us as behind us. We will be halfway through. Oh, until he makes more. He's still making more. I mean, uh, volume 22 came out March 9th of this year. Oh, Lord. Um, 22 reverse. I don't know what that means. That being said, there's, I don't July think we all that shit. So we're fine. What's that? Uh, it's, they're not going to adapt all of it, so we'll be okay. I want them to adapt all of it. I want them to keep going forever like Monogatari. I want endless, See. endless trash. Shovel it into my fucking face, please. He writes so many light novels. He's been writing Index for, for fucking 13 years or whatever, and he did Heavy Object. Still going, Heavy Object. Last, um... Uh, last volume, okay, December 2018. So there'll be another one soon, probably. He's on that uh, that Stephen King game, whatever Stephen King had. We got these guys. We got to watch Million Arthur. What is this? Or um, play the game, the fighting game based on Million Arthur. Million Arthur apparently is um a show or book he wrote about Britain, and there's a million. King Arthur's and a million uh, uh, queens or a million Joan of Arcs or something. I don't know. Uh, well, that's bizarre. He has so many light novels. Good for him. I wish I had that kind of fucking work. How many there. are still going? Saikyo wo Koji Rasata level counter stop Ken Seijo Beatrice Najakten Sononawa Boo Boo. <laughs> what is I'll this? I'll show you my son boo boo. <laughs> the weakness of Beatrice and level cap. This looks like a light novel. This will be an anime at some point. We'll watch this. It's got to be. The man's a genius. He writes the mangas, too, of all this stuff. I think. Uh, we got to put this... We got to put an end to this thing. You're right. Um... Well, I had a great time. Uh, you know, the, again, these are not so much for, I feel like, uh, your enjoyment as it is for our enjoyment. Yeah, <laughs> I just is... want to talk about Index, baby. Baby, yeah. Uh, and we've got something coming up. 
like the next thing we'll talk about will be maybe something that interests actual people other yes, than us. The next thing will actually be watchable and you'll be like, oh, I will be able to, because most people have seen this thing that we're watching. Yes. Follow our Twitter if you want to find out what we're watching next few days. Big episode coming. Yep. Can't wait. It's, Very excited. Uh, can you believe that we are going to watch that many episodes of a thing? It's crazy. I, we've done it before, but yeah, it's been a while. Was Ping it's Pong our last one? Ping Pong uh, Club? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that would have been... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be it, huh? I think so. Well, but, you know, then we also did all of... Uh, all of Black Lagoon, so... That was before that? Yeah, 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 that's what okay. I'm saying. So it's not unprecedented, but it's been oh, yeah. a whole long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm excited. I'm excited to do it. We're going to get to the bottom of something very, very mysterious. We're going to dive... It's, it's a deep dive. It's basically journalism, what we're going to be doing. We uh, have to talk about this thing. We have to talk about it, baby. So, um... Let's just click on one of the next... Results for Gregorian chant dubstep. <laughs> uh, let's see if this works. How's this sounding? Loading. Oh, you could always just do a pirate doncopter. Ah. Uh, hmm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Sure. Perfecto. See you in a bit, everybody.